Lewandowski. He's in. Stops up backhand and he scores. Uh, I was screaming when I scored the goal. The game when he goal. How are you feeling? I'm ecstatic. After months of waiting and anticipation, we are finally here. The 2023 IIHF E-World Championship, and we have it for you right here at IIHF Hockey. We would like to welcome everyone around the world from Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and all of our other platforms. Brandon Bigsby and Nick DeMeo here with you on the call. And Nick, we finally reached this point. We've been waiting for it, and finally, it has arrived, my friend. It has arrived, and uh, at least for for me, I have been off air almost the entire time since the last IIHF E-World Championship. So, my friend Brandon, while I may have been working with you offline and in a number of capacities, it's been a long time, and I apologize for leaving you without a dope beat to step to. But nevertheless, we are here. It is time. We have bumped this shindig up by about four months because, well, honestly, the mayhem could not contain itself we have some of the best players in 1v1 action all across the entire globe, spanning across four groups, multiple matchups. We have a laundry list of games ahead of you today. As we are in the group stage, we have surpassed the qualifying stage, and we are now into the group stage portion of this competition, and it's about to get a little bit nutty. It's about to get a little bit nutty, and anyone that was with us last year for the 2022 rendition of this tournament, it was absolutely bonkers. This year should be absolutely no different. Finland returning to bring their championship back for a third straight year. They won in both 2020 and last year in 2022 in absolutely ridiculous fashion, Nick. I mean, if anyone was here with us in that <laughs> tournament absolutely crazy how they won that we're going to show you that here in just a little bit yeah in a little bit we'll talk about that as we gear up to get into the uh first matchup of the day this featured matchup between Czechia and Slovakia and some of these players we saw last year represent their country really well but before we get into like the the matchups Brandon we have uh, something interesting to really talk about, and I think we touched upon it last year when we worked with uh, not only Cam and Grizz, but with all of our broadcast partners across the globe, we talked about the community. If you're watching today, you'll see the English feed right here on Twitch and all the other platforms, but you'll also see Alex, aka Bloody LP, with the German feed uh, also on his channels there. We have other channels coming up with like the Finnish broadcast, maybe bringing that to you next week. A lot of different aspects of the community all coming together what i loved the most and i think you can touch upon this too here was how prideful everybody was in the chat representing their countries no matter what happened with the outcome and the results of the matches everybody was here kind of to celebrate hockey during a really troubling time and now that we're moving forward from that i think we're going to see even more of that camaraderie come together until that puck drops on the ice yeah, I'd have to agree with you. And I think that that's one of the things that makes this tournament so special. There's one thing about pride for your team, pride for your club, but there's just something a little bit more special that hits home about pride for your country, people representing their homelands. And the one series that really stuck out to me last year, I remember that I still have thought about all the way these months later, because it really just kind of stuck with me. It was Sweden versus Latvia in the yes. quarterfinals last year. Both of those two fan bases showed up in droves. It was a back and forth affair. Latvia was kind of a surprise team that made it into the quarterfinal round. And Sweden, they were a favorite to win it all. When we saw Latvian flags being flooded in the chat when they had their run, and then all of a sudden Sweden comes back and their fans are all over the chat. And you're just seeing both of them in just the most sportsmanlike but passionate way possible rooting on and supporting their teams and the players representing their country. It's such a special thing. You do not get anything like this with any other tournament. It's unique. It's fun. It is so, so exciting. I can't wait to be a part of this again this year. And we're just moments away from getting it all underway yet again. Yeah, we are. We're starting here in about 10 minutes. We'll have the first featured matchup. We talked about that a little bit ago. Czechia versus Slovakia coming to you in just a couple of moments. But we can talk about some of this uh, as you mentioned some of the insanity that happened last year we hope to i mean we're gonna see a little bit of that this year the group stage the way it's gonna break down we'll talk about that here shortly two games to be played for each country one on xbox 
one on PlayStation, and those points will be tabulated in wins as they fill out the group stage. We could talk about that group stage here right now, at least for Group C. Group D will reset as we move later in the day to talk about Group D. But Group C, we have the teams right in front of us, Brandon. Yeah, and it's going to be a pretty interesting group because you have a lot of teams that you're familiar with seeing make runs. Czechia, Germany, Slovakia, Poland, and Japan, the five that are going to be in this group. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to see Czechia and Slovakia drop the puck here in just around nine minutes, as Nick mentioned. So you're going to get a look at two of those teams that are going to be really interesting to see compete. But Germany, a team that squeaked their way into the playoffs last year, got in on a game-winning goal in an overtime Nick, you and I were on the call yeah. with that. We got to hear from Bloody LP after the fact of his call during that whole thing as well. And Germany, they're a team where they have a lot of guys. They were able to bring back Kevinator. They were able to bring back Dirty Dangle. So their entire duo from the 2022 roster is back this season. That is not something that we have seen a lot of with this tournament. Going to be really interesting to see if maybe a little bit of that cohesion in the way that they play with one another is going to help them. Because even though it is 1v1, you do kind of have to have have that level of teamwork in this tournament as well another factor that makes this whole thing so unique yeah in that group stage we see the chat here it is a best of one but essentially a best of two i guess if you look at it that way both teams are uh, both countries are gonna play two games one on xbox one on playstation and that will be tabulated in win points that will move them along into the playoff stage phase three of this 2023 iihf e world championship presented to you by skoda and Strauss, three points for the win, two points for the win after OT, one point for an overtime loss, no points if you lose. Every match counts individually. Those results are not aggregated, and the two matchups of one matchup are to be played simultaneously. So we'll have the Xbox and the PlayStation happening back to, or not back to back, consecutively, concurrently. Concurrently is the word. The grammar is escaping me after being off for a year, but we're back at it. And uh, we'll make sure we cover both sides as they do take place as well. But for now, Brandon, I think it's time. We should probably talk a little bit about what we're about to see between these two uh, uh, teams, these two countries representing first here with Czechia. And Czechia being represented by Herky and Pepa Kutrusik, who was here last year as well. He was on the team with Czechia that made it all the way to the semifinals. Remember, Nick, you called this game. Actually, it was, I think it was Cam and you to call this game. Pep with the upset against Regs. He was able to get a one-to-one -one tie. They were able to get in off of aggregate. And he comes back for this Czechia team this season, but this time with a different teammate on his other side. And it's going to be really interesting to see how these two work together. You know that Pep has the experience on his side being back from last year, but on his teammate's side, a newcomer in this league did defeat Juvi, who was his teammate last year, Pep's teammate, that is, on the PlayStation side, and it's interesting. He doesn't really have a lot of experience at this high level playing against some of the best players in the world, but tournaments like this, this is where names are often made. We could maybe see a little bit of that elevation here with this team here today. Yeah, let's jump into the bios here before we talk about the other side they'll be contending against here shortly. First here with the standard, the man we saw a couple of times last year in Pepka. Yeah, Pepka, it's going to be a lot of fun. He finished top eight in Europe in the GWC tournament a couple of years ago. And he, like we said, he meant, he, excuse me, he represented this Czechia team last year in the E-World Championship. They made it all the way to the semifinals, fell against Finland. But nevertheless, we saw what Pep can do. He's a guy that has shown that he can play at this level. He steps up in the big moment when called upon. And it's going to be fun because this is going to be one of those groups to where it's a little bit of a toss-up. We mentioned it. It's a very deep group that all of these teams are rather even with each other. Every single point is going to matter, whether that be in overtime or regulation. Pep is one of those guys where he showed us last year, he is able to show up and get points in those situations when he needs to. It's going to be a lot of fun to see if he can elevate that from what we saw last season. And that's a man of my heart there, starting playing NHL with NHL 98. My favorite game at the time Ooh. was... Uh, Wayne Gretzky's hockey. I also like the Olympic hockey Nagano 98 where you had the big head mode. You could run people over, but do it representing your country. That was fun. But we'll switch gears over to that newcomer you mentioned here. He qualified for the 2023 this year's IIHF E-World Championship. 
Yeah, it's going to be Kerchi on that other side for him. And he, he's going to be on the PlayStation side, and he doesn't have a lot of experience in terms of those top-level tournaments. But if you want a good confidence boover, booster, how about this? Beat Jovi to get into this tournament. Jovi, a guy that has been in a lot of these tournaments, is one of the better 6v6 players that you'll find, represented Czechia with Pep Costa last season. So even though Kerchel doesn't really have that experience of being in this tournament or maybe being in the G. GWC in the past, he's shown that he can play with some of the best in the world. Jovi, even though he is on just the Czechia side, I think that many would argue he is in that tier of being one of the best players in Europe, one of the best players globally. And Kercho, by going in, beating him to qualify for this championship, showed that he has that ability and has earned his way in. So I'm going to be really interesting to see how he looks. He could be a sneaky, sneaky guy to look out for, could really put this Czechia team in a great position. And we'll take a look at the other side here as Puck Drop is just moments away. Our featured matchup of the day. Let's take a look at Team Slovakia. A little bit of a broad view on them here, Brandon. Yeah, Maverick and Lady Brunette. And I'm interested to see this team because when I was looking through each roster, I felt like this was the team that I feel like can be a sleeper pick. Maybe not to the same extent of a Latvia last year, but they kind of remind me a little bit of a team like Czechia last year. A team that has some experience, has shown some skill. It's going to be really interesting to watch these two teams play because they're very similar to each other in terms of storylines. So this is going to be a fun matchup. I cannot wait to see how they match up with one another. Yeah, disappointed in 2022. Only got one point point to get into when they were in group b fourth place they look to change that here with like you said similar storyline a newcomer and the veteran will first jump into that veteran in lady brunette yeah, and Lady Brunette, you might be familiar with her. She streams a good little bit in the community and qualified for this tournament two years ago representing Slovakia. They made the quarterfinals this that season, so it kind of goes to show you, as you mentioned, Nick, she has that experience. She has succeeded at this level before. Also a player for Z-Love and Esports, and it's the only woman this year competing in this tournament. So not only is she representing her country, but representing all of the women out there that are supporting and love this game in this community so so cool to see that she's gonna be a lot of fun to watch because like we said having that experience playing at that level before matching with maverick who hasn't played in this tournament but has 1v1 experience at the top level is gonna be really really interesting to see the dynamic between those two players and we'll switch over real quick to the other newcomer you mentioned just a little bit ago here is maverick yeah, and Maverick, like we said, maybe not the experience in the IIHF tournament, but he's a former Slovakian champion. He finished second place three times in the Slovakian championship, and he made the GWC European quarterfinals in 2019 on the Xbox side and even finished second in the Xbox Masters tournament for Czech slash Slovakia. So this is a guy to where he is used to winning. He is used to being in the position to win. He may not have done it, as we mentioned, in the E-World Championship in the past. It's come up a little bit short but here he is now this is his opportunity to really get his name out there show that he is one of the better 1v1 players in the world he showed that he is that in his region he's even shown that on the european side but now to do it against other fellow countries is going to be a lot of fun to watch and i think that that's why this team is such a sleeper a veteran that was not here last year that maybe some people have kind of fallen off the radar to and then another player that has the experience but just not at this level both really really skilled both have the ability and have won games before it's going to be really really fun to see how they match up against this Czechia team that has a lot of experience and made a semifinals appearance just in that last tournament as we mentioned as we bring it back into the studio here don't forget if you're watching on Facebook and Twitter to be sure to find your way over to Twitch and YouTube later on. You're going to want to be part of this as the feature matchup will end on those platforms and you'll find yourself wanting to come on through uh, over here to Twitch or YouTube to watch all of the other coverage. And then we'll have another feature matchup later on with Sweden and Switzerland to end our broadcast. But a lot of content in between there, a lot of games to be played. And as the teams are getting ready right now, let's take a look real quick, Brandon. We'll recap the insanity that happened last year and why we're so excited for this year's tournament. Drives that far side, cuts into the middle. Here's Jost, back to my scores, and we're going to overtime as Jost <laughs> ties things up in the aggregate, and this thing isn't done yet. And now on the breakout is Eki. 
Eki now across the line, still has the puck. Shot up, he scores! Eki's gonna end it in overtime, and Finland is your 2022 IIHF E World Champion. As you saw there, madness. Only that type of madness can happen in a two console aggregate synchronous overtime insanity that comes later. But now we set the stage with our first matchup of the 2023 IIHF E World Championship. We set the stage, and what's crazy, Nick, that was just from one matchup. There were a few other moments that we didn't even get to include. And if this year comes anything close to what we saw in 2022, we are in for a doozy, ladies and gentlemen, as we have our opening matchup of this year's edition of the IIHF E World Championship. A big shout out to our sponsors in Skoda and Strauss. We are on our way. This is Pep Costa and Lady Brunette on the Xbox side. And we are good to go. Pep Costa moving upward on your screen in the away can of the kits in the white and black. While for Lady Brunette in the red and black on her end. Yep. Pep trying to work his way in the offensive zone. Holes tries to pass across to Shabbat in the slot. Didn't have it open as it was blocked in front. Shabbat holds it around. And now Pep Costa will look to cycle this around a little bit. Could be a little bit of a feeling out period between these two. First game of the tournament. Two players not familiar with playing with one another. And obviously, internet connection being a factor as well. All of these teams playing from their respective home countries. As Pep Costa still has it here in the zone, just patiently working his way around. But a nice job from Lady Brunette to get that off the stick. Her first offensive zone opportunity here, trying to break it in. And she's in the neutral zone and will get into the offensive zone now. Has it with Barzil up the left side. Holds it down to the left corner and is looking for options. Holds it, trying to just find something here. And very patient play here. In the opening five minutes, no shots on that so far. Just both sides trying to find that little bit of space. And she gets it in front. Closest chance right there on the backhand. Could not connect on that, however. And now here comes Pet Costa on the other end. Pet Costa trying to work his way past the neutral zone. A little bit of speed this time. Still trying to dump that down. But a nice job from Lady Brunette to pick that off. And here she goes on the counter. Taking it to the other side, gives it to Batherson over to the slot, works her way in. Couldn't get that pass across. She was looking for it, but she does find the puck back. Goes behind the net, holds, and tries to get that pass over to the left side. Shot was saved by the goaltender here for Pep Costa. And now Lady Brunette will go back on the attack. We'll have to reset. This is a lot of back and forth. Feels very Euro, which is completely on brand for these two countries. And you might see something different as we get into the NA stage tomorrow. But right now, Definitely European style hockey being played on this wide open ice. 11 minutes to go. Now 10 and a half to go here in the opening period as that pass turned over by Lady Brunette. And here comes Pep Costa trying to take it up the right board. Spins, holds, nice little LT move. Trying to find that passing lane. Nobody home. And he's just going to have to hold on to this behind the net. Still looking for something. Just holding on to it. Gets that shot on net finally. But not the dangerous opportunity. And he'll have to go all the way back to reset after picking the puck back up. 8.30 of the play here in period number one. As Pep Costa moves into the zone over at the left corner board, trying to hold on and find something here. It's nice defense here by Lady Brunette, just taking the passing lanes away as he does sneak one across to the right post, saved, and it'll be held on for a whistle. We'll probably touch on more about why it's Canada versus Canada, but right now when you've got one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment. They are capturing it. That's why we're not seeing a lot of shots right now, as we're seeing very intentional style of play when they only have one game on the line here in the group stage. As Lady Brunette does win the faceoff, and she'll take it into the offensive zone. This is over. Nice pass to the slot. It was saved by Thompson for Pep Costa, but arguably the most dangerous chance of the game so far right there from Lady Brunette. That's a good look by Lady Brunette to try to come in short side, dish that pass in, got the shot on, and that's going to force the defense to maybe make an adjustment on that next opportunity. Lady Brunette with the face off backhand saved by Thompson, and he'll hold on for the whistle. All of a sudden, the offense starting to pick up here just a little bit here, Nick. Yeah, opening up the defense. As we just said, it went to the far side that time, and the goalie was able to make the save. High up defensive zone face off one by Pep Costa, but he didn't hold on to it. Lady Brunette has it now, trying to find a passing lane somewhere. Nice defensive play there by Pep Costa on the boards. And he'll cause a turnover and break it out. Less than five minutes to play here in the opening period. We are scoreless. As Pep Costa dumps it into the offensive zone and goes down behind the net. 
Trying to find something here. Looking, not a lot of space. Finds the pass. The slot. Great shot is blocked in front. Now go all the way back to Pepkowska's defensive end, and he'll have to reset and break it out all over again. Three minutes to play here in the opening period. Pepkowska breaks it into the left side boards. Takes it, tries to pass across. Picked off by Lady Brunette, and now she'll try to counter. Two minutes to play here now in period number one. Gets it over to the right side boards, left side of our screen. It doesn't get it past the blue line long enough as it will be turned over. Pep Costa gets it past, holds, passes it over to Lowry, trying to get something on that pass across. Wasn't open. He'll have to look for another option. Hits Anderson behind him, trying to cut in the slot, holding that LT, looking for a lane, doesn't have it. 15 seconds to play, just puts the shot on, went up in the air, got it back. Anderson holds it. One more chance for Pep Costa. Gets the shot on, saved. I believe that is Grubauer in net for Lady Brunette, and that will do it for the opening 20 minutes of playing a very steady 20 minutes, and we are scoreless after one, and Nick, you kind of said it, that EU style, that more defensive play, trying to take that one prime opportunity, exactly what we saw there in that opening period. Yeah, and things are going to keep moving here as we switch with a, a little bit more octane in the action here, the PlayStation side of this exact matchup happening in front of you. It's 1-1 and a penalty here delivered as we continue to follow uh, one side going north on your screen, Pepka and uh, Crunchy. Yeah, Kirchie. as we'll see, yeah, Kirchie and Maverick here in this matchup tied at one. That's Kirchie moving upward on your screen in the away can of the jerseys while it's Maverick moving downward in the all black can of jerseys, the alternates. Gotta love that black can, the look that they've typically worn the last few years is trying to break it into zone. Now it is Maverick in those black threads. Gets it past with less than a minute to play here in the first. Cycling it around here on the power play. Maverick looking for space, trying to cut his way across. Get the pass across and he scores! The first goal of the stream and it's in favor of Maverick and Slovakia. A two to one lead with a little over 30 seconds to play. It's still scoreless on the other side. So that one opened up a bit. Maverick doing his thing the newcomer we talked about it happening in front of you right now as maverick maybe not done trying to break into the offensive zone again three on three mercer gets it shot on won't go and Kirchie has to try to maybe get one more look three seconds gets it past the blue line passes across backhand pass will not connect time will expire and that will do it for the first period of this matchup over on the playstation side maverick the late goal in the first period a two to one lead over Kirchie slovakia with that advantage over czechia and there's no red zone to be had here but the action will not stop brandon we're switching gears real quick over back to the xbox side as we have a scoreless matchup there again two games here on this featured matchup make your way over at the conclusion of these two games uh to go and watch more action at twitch.tv slash iihf hockey or over on youtube second period halfway through here brandon still scoreless and i'll keep an eye on the other game as you call this one he yeah, has both teams still looking to find that opening goal. As you mentioned, Nick, as Lady Brunette trying to get it past the blue line, not able to. It is off sides here to start out. And it's interesting. You can't even just tell the way that this game is flowing compared to the other game. Things a lot more locked down. Not a lot of space here for either side to find those open passes. While you saw on the PlayStation matchup between these two teams, really a lot of the opposite. Both teams were really kind of flying and getting those chances a little bit more opened up. As Lady Burnett holds in the offensive zone, trying to find a little bit of that space for the pass. That might Bumped be off the, the uh, nice off from Pep Costa. Sorry about that, Brandon. I was going to say that might be the veteran style versus the newcomer style here on this international stage. Both sides seem to be working though so far uh, as we see an opportunity come in there. Quick chance, another one off the side of the net. Lady Brunette trying to get that opening goal. It's been hurt. It's gotten the vast majority of the scoring opportunities in this game. As Pep Costa trying to change that right here. Has Lowry up the right boards, trying to pass it down below and he will do so and gets it to Lowry. Anderson now has it, holds. Has some space, looking for the passing lane. Doesn't have it so far. Still holds it over at the left board. Circles all the way back. Tries to go to the slot, looking for something. Just the patience from Pep Costa. Gets that shot off the side of the net, but gets it back afterwards. Pass across, and he scores! That's Kent Johnson to break things open in favor of Pep Costa and Czechia. And finally, after a lot of time and a lot of patience, Pep Costa breaks this game open over Lady Brunette. And that's a lot of patience. 
taking your time and making your country proud while the other side is down by one uh, for, for Team Czechia. Right here, Pepka gets the one up on Lady Burnett. So a big goal, and you know, you have to kind of wonder with the way this game is flowing, could that be the one goal that we see? Maybe forces Lady Burnett to get a little bit more aggressive. She's played back a little bit, has had her chances, just not able to really convert. And Pepkasta, with that patience that you mentioned, Nick, able to put the puck in the down a little bit real over quick four and a half to play. We have a goal on the other side. I'll see if we can catch the replay. We're switching feeds here. Play ah, oh, we missed it. I was going to try to see if we could watch the PlayStation side with that goal. 3-1 lead now for Maverick. We'll cut back to the other one. So Czechia winning on one side. Slovakia winning on the other as this is the Czechia winning side right now with Pep Costa trying to make it a two to nothing lead over Lady Brunette. Two and a half to play here in period number two. And Lady Brunette forces the turnover and tries to break it past her own end. Gets it over to White Cloud trying to break it in, looking for some space. Won't find it. And here comes Pep Costa now breaking it in. One and a half to play here in period number two. It will be the fast minute that approaches. So about 30 seconds in real time left for these two sides. Lady Burnett breaking it in now after causing the turnover. Gets it past. Has some space. Has some numbers. Pass it. Oh, and it hit off the left post. Just couldn't finish that home. Still has possession. Looking for one more chance. Turned over. Pep Costa gets it. Tries to just go up the left boards, but it's shut down before any danger. And that will do it for the end of the second period. Pep Costa with a 1 0 lead. A close chance for Lady Brunette as we will go back to the PlayStation side of this match with Kerchi and Maverick. Maverick oh, gets it across and scores right on cue, my friends. <laughs> Maverick with a 4 to 1 lead over Kerchi. He knew the camera was on him, and that man delivered. That's the stuff I think you love to see as we have a 4 1 lead right now for Team Slovakia. Maverick in a dominant position in the opening matchups and contests here in the 2023 IIHF World Championship. So the rookie, so to speak, here in this tournament, making a statement early, a 4-1 to one lead over Kerchi. We mentioned the battle between two players that have not played in this tournament before on the PlayStation side, while on the other side, the two veterans. And so here comes Kirchi just trying to find something. No space. Shut down the slot by Maverick, who just kind of holds it, turned it over, however. And here comes Kirchi. Backhand, forehand is saved by Grubauer in net. And Maverick gets it out of his own end without too much danger, but turns it over in the neutral zone. Why is he past the blue line? Eight minutes to play here in period number two. Kirchi trying to mark a comeback down by three. They say it's the worst lead in hockey. Can he prove that to be true? Dubois has it. Bomb left corner passes across. Saved by Grubauer, but Comtois still has it. Gives it over, pass across, and he scores. Kerchi gets on the board and responds. Cuts that lead to a two-goal disadvantage here in favor of Maverick, but a big momentum play there in favor of Czechia. Absolutely, and we're going to come over to the other game with that being a two-goal differential. We have a one-goal differential here with Slovakia and, Canada, uh, and Czechia on the Xbox side, so we'll keep the action right here unless something changes in the PlayStation game. A one goal game, but Lady Brunette looking to change that. Gets it into the offensive zone, down by one. 13 and a half to play here in regulation. Her teammate winning on the PlayStation side, trying to secure her end of the deal. Gets that backhand shot, glove saved by Thompson. Rather easy save for him. It's been possible will just hold this and settle it down. Takes it up on the breakout, gives it over to the middle, and gives it to the left side to Dubois. Dubois shot on. Looks like they might hit off the blocker of the goaltender, but he still has it. Costa just looking for his options, trying to find something, find Cylinder in the slot, pass back to Dubois, shot goes wide, left side, puck battled for at the left boards, goes back to Pep Costa, it's a backhand from the point, picked up by Lady Brunette, and here she goes on the counter, 10 and a half to play in period number three, a one nothing advantage for Pep Costa for Czechia. Lady Brunette gets into the offensive zone, holds it at the bottom left boards, trying to find something, looks for her options down low behind the net, scrum for the puck, and Pep Costa will come out with it. Gives it to Dubois at the left side, now over to Cousins, nine minutes to play now. Pep Costa at the right side, holding, trying to wait for that open look, doesn't have it yet, and it's turned over, and here comes Lady Brunette. Three on two. Looks like she's going to go for a line change. Her players rather will. Has to hold and wait. Does so. Johnson. Slot shot. Won't go. Saved by the goaltender for Pep Costa. But a penalty taken by Pep Costa. And a power play for Lady Brunette. Arguably the biggest opportunity she's had all night. 
This could be huge here as it's the end of two on the other side, on the PlayStation side. They're just getting underway in the third period here, and it's four to two. So if she can get this tied up here, this could be a huge opportunity for Slovakia to go ahead early here in this group stage. You saw the stats there on your screen momentarily. A little bit over eight and a half minutes of time on attack for Lady Brunette. Over 13 minutes of time on attack for Pep Costa. Neither side, however, in double digits in the shot category. So just goes to show you how valuable the possession game is in. But here we go. Lady Brunette has it, looking to tie it with a goal. Has that power play for another minute, 35 seconds. Just cycling around, trying to find something. Pass across, won't connect. And here comes Pep Costa after the turnover. Pulls it, tries to pass it over to the left side, but gets it back after it was deflected. Goes behind the net on that pass, gives it over to Wah. Wah looking, Wah defended well, does not pass it to the point. Gets his way around a pair of defenders. Pep Costa trying to cook and kill that time, doing a great job so far. That was about a minute of time that he drained off that clock. Just 19 seconds now for Lady Brunette on the power play. Gets it in the offensive zone. No shot on puck loose in front now. But it's picked up by Pep Costa. And that will bring it back to five on five. Or, as my friend Nick, you like to say, <laughs> on six hockey. As Pep Costa brings it into the offensive zone. Holding that possession. Maybe just trying to kill the time. Knowing the way this game is flowing. Less than three, in a, or less, excuse me, less than four minutes remaining. Pep Costa up by one. Has it behind the net. Just holding it. Gets the pass in front to Comtois. But it's saved by the goaltender, and here comes Lady Brunette trying to take advantage. Three minutes left in the third period. One goal separates these two sides. Lady Brunette has in the offensive zone, goes behind the net, doesn't have a lane, and now will be picked up by Pep Costa. Two minutes left now, poke checked by Lady Brunette. It looks like both sides will go ahead and get their players out for a line change. 70 seconds remaining. Pep Costa breaks in the offensive zone. A lot of space at the right boards. Holds back. Can't go behind the net, but it's poke checked by Lady Brunette. Here she goes. Has some numbers. It's three on three. Puts it into the offensive zone. 48 seconds left. Pass across. Gets it to Dubois. Dubois holds. Needs something. Shot on. Pass across. Another shot. Two big saves by Thompson. Huge play for Pep Costa. 36 seconds remain. He'll dump it. He has Dubois who splits the two defenders at the right side. He holds it. 30 seconds to play. Pep Costa just looking to drain the time. Goes behind the net. Holds it still. Still holding it as he'll pass it over. And Lady Brunette will pick it up momentarily. And she will get full control. 20 seconds left. Last chance potentially for the Slovakian and Lady Brunette. Gets in the offensive zone. Has it with Sandheim. 13 seconds left. Has to get a shot. Pump checked away by Pep Costa. But it's turned over. One more chance. Eight seconds left. Lady Brunette behind the net. Holds it. Doesn't have the pass in front. Pep Costa picks it up. One second, and that will do it. It was a defensive battle and an offensive struggle, but Pep Costa comes up with the win for Czechia. A one to nothing score line, an entertaining defensive battle nevertheless. What a game between these two, and now Slovakia hoping they can get the win over on the PlayStation side. As we switch over to that PlayStation side right now, Brandon, heck of a performance, a very uh, defensive-minded game there with the veterans. Not the case here. Six goals, now seven, as that one extends the lead for Slovakia, a much-needed insurance marker here in the third period. And no goals were scored when we did go over, but Mav Maverick, he just seems to have a flair for the theatrics. <laughs> he knows the camera's on him every time. Two of the goals he scored is right when we have switched on to him, so never say that he's afraid of the spotlight. He thrives in it based off of what we've seen in game number one, a two to five lead for him. It's a little bit under eight minutes to play here in period number three for our featured matchup between Czechia and Slovakia. And I guess what we so can do a... here, Brandon, is as we have a minute here, uh, as we are covering these featured matchups, we could talk a little bit about why the teams are picking Canada as their choice here in the group stage. Yeah, so essentially to explain this is a chance there for Kirchie will be held on after the save from Afrin. But essentially these two teams... We want balance here in this tournament. If every
every team, every country were forced to play with their own team. There's not a way in the game to balance those overall. So if you had Canada facing off against Austria per se, you're going 85, 86 overall against around a 66 to 65 overall. We want that balance. So we give these teams the choice to kind of have this balanced Canada versus Canada matchup. It is that way in the group stages. However, in the playoffs, in our quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals matchups, these two teams will have to select a team. They can only select that team once per round. Once they pick that said team, they cannot use them again. So it's free reign here for this tournament. You can pick whoever you want, with Canada being the best overall team in the game. That is why you see everyone choosing those teams, but that will switch come next week as we start through the playoffs. As that is a little bit of strategy game that comes in. It's a chance there for Kirchi. Does not go. Hit off the back iron. It's another chance there. Saved by Grubauer across. And, you know, Nick kind of pulling you in here. Some of that strategy, we saw a lot of that last year. And we're going to see that here later. There's another chance saved by Grubauer for Maverick. And, man, I try to bring you in, but they don't seem to want to. <laughs> Just action, action, action over the last minute and a half. They don't want to at all. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. The big upset there with Team Canada last year falling early in the tournament everyone expected them to be the odds on favorites if not the winners of the entire tournament and that provided a very spicy storyline as we got into the semifinals that following week yeah, we saw some of that strategy, too, be a conversation point. Is here comes Kirchi. Holes, nice little move on the L2. Can't get a shot on off of it. So we have 45 seconds to play here in period number three, our featured match between Czechia and Slovakia. Czechia's representative in Pepe Costa, one versus Lady Brunette. But it looks like it's going to be Slovakia to even things up here with Maverick. Winning over Kirchi, unless we have something real crazy happen. We did see a three-goal comeback last year, so don't say we haven't seen it before here in the E-World Championship. It looks like we have a, a little bit of a freeze here with 23.7 seconds to go. Yeah, we got a that freeze. That is being broken in by Kirchi at the moment, and it looks like we are back underway now as he just dumped that down in the back right corner, got it back, almost had the backhand open, could not get that to connect, and there's 15 seconds to go now. Moving it up here is Maverick trying to get one more goal. Remember, goal differential, one of those tiebreakers. So every single point that you score matters. Kirchi trying to break it into the zone, holding, trying to get something, and it'll go behind the net. No time left now, and that will do it here for our PlayStation side of this matchup. Slovakia evening the odds a little bit. Maverick defeating Kirchi 5-2 in that dominant second period performance. Really would put him over the top. That was a big time performance in the spotlight for him was on him he made his country proud and slovakia picks up a win there when they needed to definitely in order to stay competitive in this group stage more games to come as we look at some highlights here we'll jump back to the studio in just a moment if you're watching we'll talk more about that come on over to twitch and youtube we'll give you some instructions on that shortly it's a great save there but yeah we'll come back to the studio brandon we have some things to talk about so we'll do that as we say it as you see below my face here, continue to watch all of the coverage here on twitch.tv slash IIHF hockey or YouTube at IIHF as this featured broadcast has come to a conclusion. So if you're watching on social media, whether that be uh, Facebook or Twitter or anywhere else you might have found and stumbled upon and meandered to this particular broadcast, make sure you find myself and Brandon's faces over on Twitch and YouTube. We have a full packed schedule. I'm looking at my notes here. I got 18 pages of paper. 15 Google Sheets open. We have a lot of things to cover. I don't want you to miss it. This is a really fun tournament. I want you to be a part of it, and we want to thank our partners, Skoda and Strauss, as we set up uh, the next couple of things here, Brandon. I have an update for you on my right side Google Sheet as we look at an update. The simultaneous game that happened during Czechia and Slovakia was Germany and Japan. Japan representing their country here in the 2023 tournament. And 5-1, to one, Seven to nothing in favor of Germany. We're going to refresh and go to our standing screen, and we can kind of walk through that as it goes in. Uh, once that updates, I'll bring you to there. But yeah, so our next page we'll turn to here in just a moment. We have two games uh, that we'll cover between Slovakia and Poland. That'll be coming up to you shortly, and we'll watch in the background Japan versus Czechia. That'll be coming up next here in just a moment as we try to bring you into the standings. But your takeaways from those first two games we just witnessed, Brandon. 
they had two very different games, contrasting games. That was kind of the storyline coming into this one, not necessarily in, ter in terms of the style of play, but just in terms of the way these two teams match up. You have a veteran versus a veteran and Lady Brunette versus Pep Costa. And then you have two players that have experience but have never been on this stage before in Maverick and Kirchie. And both of those games, I would say, delivered in much different ways. Lady Brunette had a lot of the early opportunities. It felt like she was going to maybe be the one that broke that game open and got the goal with the way that she played in that first period, but give Pep Costa a lot of credit that patience defensively, taking advantage of the chance he had offensively, finally was able to break one through, and that one goal, you kind of had the feeling that maybe that first goal with either side would be the winner with how well both were playing defensively. That's exactly what happened. Pep Costa did what he needed to do. He got that zone time, did a great job of draining the clock towards the end of that game, and it just really didn't give Lady Brunette enough time to get that one goal despite a few opportunities late, and then in the second game, I mean, how about Maverick making a statement the way he did in that game? Much more high-flying, a lot more offensive rhythm, it felt like, for both sides. And I think with Maverick, just the way he was able to find those plays, find those little spaces, and take advantage of them against a really good player in Kirchie on the other end really makes it tough to play against. And I think you have to give him a lot of credit for the way he played and also waiting for us on the stream as well to score those goals. So much appreciated from an entertainment aspect. But you see the standings as they are updated. Germany, as of now, number Number one with those two wins. They got 12 goals for just one allowed in their series versus Japan between those two. Poland, the only team yet to play. And then you have Czechia and Slovakia right behind them who did split one to one on those two. Czechia had the less goals, but we're going to have to kind of wait and see how that shakes out. And the reason those matchups are so big, Nick, is we often see that when it comes to those last playoff spots, those head to heads make a massive, massive difference between whether you get in or move on to that quarterfinals or if your season ends at that very moment after today they really do matter and they count let's jump quickly as they're going to jump into this game right now let's talk a little bit about team poland who we'll see coming up here in just a moment yeah it's going to be darkovsky on the left side and venom on the right and Poland they're a pretty interesting case especially for Venom Venom he is one of the more seasoned players in this tournament he played for Germany in the 2020 season represented them and made it all the way to the quarterfinals and then last year represented Poland was in this tournament but did not have that same success Poland a little bit disappointing I think compared to how people maybe thought they'd be they missed out on the quarterfinals by eight points they finished fourth in their respective group but he's pairing with a newcomer in Darkovsky who doesn't really have a lot of that competitive experience so it's going to be a lot of fun to see the seasoned vet versus the rookie something that's been a common theme that we've seen so far throughout our coverage and I kind of like that so let's talk about this uh seasoned versus rookie pairing here we don't have a lot of information on Darius but what we do know is like you said Poland missed the quarterfinals by last year they don't want to replicate that again this year and they're up against a team Slovakia that might have some opportunities to open up for them to take advantage of yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to see how he steps up. And I mean, I'm going to be honest, Darius looks as ready on his screen and on the thumbs as he is on that picture. I think he fares a pretty good chance. He won the Polish championship in 2022. So even though he doesn't have the most experience of playing at that top level with or against people outside of his own homeland, he still has that ability to play really well at this game. He knows that he can be a winner. He knows that he has that skill. It's just a matter of stepping up and bringing your best game forth. And I think that he has the chance to do it in Poland. They're one of those teams, like we mentioned, missed out on the playoffs last year, competed in a really tough group A, missed by about eight points. But that's not as large of a gap with the way that this series goes as you think. So we'll see how they can kind of step up with that dynamic. It's going to be a lot of fun. If he can kind of follow in those footsteps of what we saw Slovakia, do to where the newcomer in Mafrica really made a statement could be some good things for Darius on that end so excited to see him play and face off I am too as we bring it back into the studio here we have more matches coming up here in just a moment like we talked about Slovakia versus Poland on your way shortly Japan and Czechia will watch that in the background get updates for you on those the standings are in group D coming up here in just a little bit as well we'll have a couple more matches to talk about here before we go into group D but Group C, well underway here. Two in the books, three and four. Coming down the pipeline in just a few moments. We want to welcome our social media viewers over to Twitch and YouTube. We're glad to have you here. Nice to be on your screen bringing you this action one more year. We're back in the group stage, and we have a moment here. Let's talk about those groups, Brandon. We have four of them. 
in this group stage here today. Absolutely, you do. As you get a quick look, there's five teams per group other than Group D that does only have the four. But, you know, you kind of get a look at it. And it's really well distributed. You see really two or three teams from each one that really does have a chance to make that run. And I think that's what you like to see. And speaking of making that run, we're going to make that run into action here. We have Yoza for Japan, Pep Costa for Czechia, who we just saw get three points for his team as he tried to go right in and get the scoring started. It was not able to get that to go was Pep Costa the home side moving left and upward on your screen while Yoza the away side moving downward on your screen in those away kits both teams using Canada for their selection something we'll see more than likely throughout our coverage here of the group stages as we mentioned everyone able to choose whatever team of their choice for the group stage that's the chance there for Pep Costa won't go saved by Grubauer to hold on to a whistle and on the other side Kirchi and banana are just getting underway well as well so we'll keep an eye on there we'll jump back and forth like we did before matchups three and four underway right now yeah and something to keep in mind too this is big for japan losing that first series versus germany the way they did they're already rather behind on the goal differential a minus 11 as of now so need to pick up some points here because checky has a chance from pepcosta could not connect shot was just a little bit weak from what he wanted to see and it'll be turned over there in the offensive zone. Yoza trying to call things off a little bit and get things to chill out. Pepcosta gets it off the turnover, however, and brings it into the offensive zone. Nice little job there from Yoza creating the turnover, representing Japan, was a representative for this team last year as well. Well, B. Deke will not fall, and Pepcosta will go ahead and break things in. He has some space there with Dubois down the middle, gets it passed over, but a nice defensive play, but he gets it back. Up and down action here so far. Very hectic despite no goals being scored in the first seven minutes. And real quick, an here opening goal on the other the side. And I tried to catch that replay. I'm just missing it just a little bit. We'll flip back over. But a one nothing game on your screen on the PlayStation side. Japan scoring first over there. And do you want to keep it here, Brandon? We could keep it here. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. We just started in that game. It was a little bit over a minute in that banana got that goal to go in and he might not be done. Just got in the offensive zone, shot on, blocked in front. This is banana going downward on your screen in the away Canada jerseys. Kerchi moving upward in the Canada home reds. Down by one Kerchi looking to bounce back from that five to two loss as he tries to get a chance puck loose in front that's Dreiger that will hold on to it he'll hold on to the whistle but an interesting story here both of these two players coming off the loss trying to make up for it here for their respective teams yeah we'll talk about Japan like not the best showing they had last year losing you know 86 goals conceded three goals for they want to make a statement here and they have a lot to prove and that's a lot on Kirchi to step up here and be the the guy that he needs to be for his squad and his country yeah, and you know, you talked about Japan wanting to make a statement. Yanza, or excuse me, Yoza, he was a part of that team last year that led up 86 goals. So it's one of those things, you know, this one maybe taking a little bit more personally while Banana, this is his first appearance in this tournament as he has the one goal advantage here in his second game of action. Kerchi trying to change that here, working it in the offensive zone. Did not have that pass connect over to the left point. This is a big hit there by Banana. What a play. He's going to try to go into the offensive zone to take advantage of it. Moves it up the right boards, left side of our screen. This will be turned over immediately as here comes Kirchi with some speed up the left side. Kirchi holds forehand, goes backhand. Could not get that puck to go past Dreiger. And that will go to Banana who will hold things. And now it's turned over, but it's offside right after that. 11.34 to go. The action just palpable here between these two teams. Yeah, that definitely is. And the other one, no score still on the other side with the Xbox game between Yoza and Pepka will keep you abreast of that situation as it unfolds. As here is Kirchi gets that shot on and it's held on by Dreiger and saved. And you look at Kirchi trying to bounce back and you know it's kind of interesting when you have games like this both players trying to get that momentum back after a tough loss early on. As it's a face off in the officer's zone for Kirchi. Holds on to it behind the net. Looking for something. Nice pass. Actually, it was a shot in the save. But pass back out. Saved again by Dragger. And he'll hold on that time. Banana not taking that second.
As the save there by Bananas goaltender. Kirchi trying to just get something here to tie this game up 1-1. Banana currently holding that one to nothing lead. Tied up by Kirchi in the offensive zone. Didn't have much. As it's going to be turned over. And here comes Banana with an 8.50 to go here as it's turned over again. It's going to be a delayed penalty as well as a shot off from Kirchi. Won't be on net, but he will get the power play opportunity here. 8.26 to play in the first. And we have the opening goal on the other side as well. Slovakia and Japan on the Xbox side. Pepka gets the first goal there. So Japan 1-0 here. Slovakia 1-0 on the other side. And a Artekia. play there for Tekia to get the tying answer in this one. Kirchi off the faceoff play on the power play. Ties this up at 1-1. One one. So Tekia from being down in this series in terms of the aggregate to being now up. 1-1 one one here. 1-0 one there. Kirchi ties it up against Banana. Crazy goal scoring happening right now as Pepka gets another one for Team Czechia in the other side. And it looks like Kirchi trying to do the same. Maybe the two teammates on the same wavelength. Shot on. Dragger will save it. And Banana will hold on for a whistle. 6.54 to play here in this first period. And check you. All of a sudden, all the ties turning in their direction. Definitely favoring check you as they're starting to pick up some momentum. They needed to right there after battling it out uh, just a couple of moments ago in the first matchup against uh, Slovakia. As here is Kirchi within the offensive zone. Holds it, was hit there from behind. A nice job there from Banana. As he tries to get his lead back. Gets into the offensive zone, but not for long. Nice job there from Sillinger. As Kirchi will just dump that one in and get a chance offensively. Nice hit again on the boards. Banana being pretty physical so far early in the game. He's had a couple of big hits that's caused some turnovers for Kirchi and trying to take advantage of them right here. Just four minutes to play here in the opening period of this game. Green Banana Gunzo and Kirchi. Banana with it in his offensive zone. Nice job there from Kirchi poking it out. As this is Japan versus Czechia in this matchup. Trying to break in his banana, but a turnover, and here comes Kirchi. Two on one pass across, backhand saved by Dreiger. And he'll hold on to the whistle. A big play from the goaltender. And I know it might be an AI, but those goalies, they make a difference in tournaments like this as well. They really do, and it's about how you can manipulate, maneuver, and position your defense to let your goalie make those saves. And sometimes they'll come up big for you, but more often than not, you got to really be in the right position to make an impact. As a goal for Kirchi, a two to one lead now in favor of the Czechia player. And Kirchi, we kind of mentioned trying to come back here after that tough loss, doing so after being down one nothing early. This is on the PlayStation side, a two one lead over Banana. It's another chance and another goal. Kirchi makes it three to one, back to back goals in less than a minute. Guys, we got a glitch in the system here. Hang on one second, we'll get you back to that. Live broadcast, am I right? Yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a great, great job here from Nick. Running things on the back end, oh, trying to man. make things happen for us. Is we'll get that back here underway as we'll call the action that is in front of us because that's what we do. We adjust and we adapt as we'll it looks like to we're going to go ahead and... Yeah, we're going to take you back here to that other matchup. It's a two to nothing game. That's the puck being moved up here. Passed over and got to get into the offensive zone. Another chance there after the first save. Dragger's throwing and it's going to put its own in. The puck went off of the back pad of Dragger. It's a three to nothing advantage now on what was a wild sequence there in that last couple of seconds. Why right as we tuned in? I know it was a little bit of a glitch, so, so to speak, but boy, was it worth it. Another chance saved by Dragger. And just craziness going on on both sides. Already in the offensive zone, shot on, saved and held, but not held for long. Mazal will be taken out immediately. Getting in the offensive zone right now. 
He's behind the net. Pass the cross. Hits off of the side of Dreiger near that blocker. There's another shot in front. Big save by Dreiger yet again. He's just trying to move it right now in the offensive zone is Pep Costa. This is the Xbox side of this Japan and Czechia matchup. Czechia currently winning both matchups on the PlayStation and Xbox sides. Pep Costa trying to close the deal here up by three over halfway through with this game. He's holding, trying to get that breakout. Nothing available to him. Nice job there, Pep Costa. Shot on, goes wide. But the four check of Pep Costa giving Yoza worlds of trouble. Is another turnover in his own. Then another chance for Pep Costa. Couldn't get that one to go. Another chance saved by Dreiger. And Pep Costa just applying all types of pressure, continuing to do so on the four check. And Yoza. Trying to break it in. Another defensive zone turnover. Just can't get it out right now. Pep Costa all over him. Trying to take advantage of it. Working it at the left side. Goes in front. Passed over to Dubois. Didn't get the shot off. Goes to the slot. Shot on it. It looked like it was saved off the blocker. Then hit off the right post. Puck will go all the way to the opposite side for an icing. Yosa just wanted to get that out and take a collective breath. Take a breath indeed. I think we all needed to take a breath after that craziness, but I'm glad we're back on track here today. <laughs> back on track, the train is rolling again. It never really stopped. It barely even sputtered, to be honest. But <laughs> nevertheless, we are back and underway with our regularly scheduled programming as the Costa with a 3 to nothing lead, three minutes to play here in the second period. Czechia trying to improve their positioning in the stands after splitting with Slovakia in their last matchup. Costa has it, couldn't get a shot on as he went in front of the net. Here comes Yosa, has three on two. Nice back check there from Pep Costa to get back. Yosa will have to backtrack a little bit and go to the point as it's turned over. Two on one for Pep Costa, has Gregor, speeds his way past, hold the backhand, couldn't get the shot off cleanly as Dreiger made a pretty easy save. Mercer has it at the left side, looking, nice play. Shot on was pass saved by Dreiger, and Yosa was trying to get it out of his own end. It's really been the big struggle for him so far. Has to cross to the left side and Pep Costa trying to restart the cycle, not able to do so. Five seconds to play in the second period. Gets one more chance after creating a turnover and he's just going to hold this over to the left corner. And that will do it for period number two. Pep Costa all over Yoza. It's a three to nothing score line, but the story exactly what the stats on your screen show. Just 18 seconds of time attack for Yoza. No shots on that through two periods. Yeah, and uh, things are getting a little bit spicy here. For Team Czechia, as they're looking to just pile on and get ahead on this group stage. As here is Pep Costa trying to clinch this game as a chance quickly there. Saved off the right pad. He will get a power play, however. It looks like he was tripped up there at the end of that shot. Faced off to the left side of Dragon, right side of our screen. Pep Costa will tie that up. It'll be won by Yosa who will try to take this up. Can't really dump it here with the situation he's in. It'll be turned over, but a nice job nevertheless killing some of that power play time. 1.30 to go on the power play for Pep Costa. As he gets in the offensive zone. Holds it. Looks, goes behind the net. Has Dubois. He's trying to find a passing option. Doesn't have it so far. Gives over Shabbat the left point. Shabbat back to Dubois. Shot on to the left side. He scores it. A pretty cycle. It does not get any better than that. A 4-0 lead for Pep Costa on a beautiful setup power play goal. And that's a, that's a pretty insurance marker right there. So what we'll do is I think we have it ready. We can switch our focus and bring you in to the other matchup that's happening on your screen. It's the PlayStation side. And that's going to be uh, Slovakia and Poland as Maverick. You're watching the PlayStation Maverick feed of this contest. Yeah, and this was a big matchup between these two. Poland yet to play. Czechia splitting. Or excuse me, Slovakia splitting with Czechia. Maverick won the one of those two games against Turkey, who we just saw on that other end. Here is Maverick, the away side, moving upward on your screen in the officer zone. In the white can of the jerseys. There's Darkovsky in the home side. Up by one, has the puck now. Puts it down low. And he's going to have to turn that over. It's a nice defensive play there for Maverick, trying to break it in. 
Melissa with Cousins at the right boards. Holds it. Trying to move his way across. Gets in front. Didn't have the space, but Dubois finds it. Dubois looking. Doesn't have much shot on. Goes back behind the net. Nearly turned over. Keeps his possession. Nice play from Maverick on the offensive end, but couldn't get that clear-cut opportunity. As he gets it back on the turnover in the neutral zone. Gets it. Maverick pass across. Couldn't get it cleanly. It's saved. But pass back out. And Maverick gets it back. It's on the right side. Didn't have anything. And it will be taken by Darkuski. A couple of scary seconds there after the pressure there from Maverick. Still trying to gather himself. It's in the end of the neutral zone. Holds it. Between the legs move. Didn't have it for a second, but got it back. Gives it to Comtois. Holds it over the face. Also, Rose turned over. Maverick on a breakaway. All alone. Backhand goes. AI and it gets it back to the human. And it's saved by Darkovsky. He went to the goaltender himself and then went off with a little bit of a mental psych out from Darkovsky. And I think it made it work. That was Here dangerous. Here comes Maverick on the other end. And he scores. Josh Anderson ties it up for Maverick. So a crazy sequence denied on the first chance. Capitalizes on the second. We are tied at two. We are tied at two. The momentum pushing in that direction. We're going to come off that for just a brief moment as we take a look at the other side. We'll bring you more action from that game in just a moment. But you're looking at Lady Burnett and Venom on the other side of this matchup on the Xbox side. And you can see that 9-2, to two, Brandon. That's uh, Lady Burnett in well control after the uh, disappointing first matchup she had just a little bit ago. You think she was upset about the offense? I think she might have taken her <laughs> anger out on Venom, and he might have just been the <laughs> unfortunate person in her path after the shutout in her first game, lost one to nothing. I mean, just pounding goals in, nine to two lead, five minutes to go in the third period. Almost put in another just now as Venom comes in and gets a shot on, but it's saved. That's borderline emphatic, I think. Borderline emphatic indeed is. We talked about Lady Brunette, one of the veterans in this tournament, played in the 2020 edition, made it to the quarterfinals for Slovakia, did not make it last year as Slovakia trying to get back into the quarterfinals this year. Disappointed in 2022, they missed the quarterfinals by 11 points, got just one point as a group. But right now, Slovakia looking pretty good so far. Lady Brunette well in control of this one should be able to get three points and you know Nick you kind of look back at the match we just saw how big was that goal that we just saw from Maverick considering what his teammates are doing right now in this game huge huge if you're a teammate of Lady Brunette right now doing your part on the PlayStation side we'll get you to that game at the conclusion of this one it's Lady Brunette up nine to two as Venom trying to get at least one or two goals remember every goal matters the goal differential does have an impact on tiebreakers as well as goals four, so Venom may not have the win, but could put a couple in late. Try to better his chances as the shot from Barzal. The slot saved by Dreiger for Lady Brunette. And still has it. It's down below. That's good. Odd shot, backhand, not looking, hit the side of the net. An easy save for Dreiger. A pretty unique shot, but if it went in, it would have certainly been special. I like the creativity in 1v1. You know, everyone's got their opinions on sixes and all that stuff. But like, And I love sixes. But 1v1, it allows individual skill stick movement. If you got the thumbs, you can play 1v1. Trevor Zegers, not sure if you're watching. But I think Venom might have given you a new idea for one of those tricks you do. But nevertheless, <laughs> Venom trying to move into the offensive zone now. Excuse me, Lady Burnett, rather. 40 seconds to play here in the third period. Lady Brunette still has it. Holds beautiful little play in front. Couldn't get the shot off, but how about the fanciness from Lady Brunette? The pass in front saved by Thompson in net. As Venom trying to get one more. Little kick to himself move there. Will not go to any avail. It was Lady Brunette looking to counter on her end. It was just as important for her despite clinching the win here. Keeps with the puck, gets it with Barzil, can't keep it, however, as Mayo gives it over to Anderson. There's eight seconds to go. Adam looking for one more to try to give his team something to go home with. Not going to be able to do so as Lady Brunette will hold this out. Time will expire. A dominant performance. Lady Brunette, 17 shots, nine of them goals, over 11.30 a time on attack. 
Safe to say she took the first loss personally. That is a massive win there for Team Slovakia. Massive indeed, and now Maverick under a little bit of pressure as we switch over to the PlayStation side here, looking at Maverick going north on your screen. And Darkovsky in the lead, just scored right before we switched over. And as we talked about this earlier, Brendan, the group stage, any team can pick any team, obviously with Team Canada in NHL being the top-ranked team. Everyone's going to want to be Canada, so it's a matter of skill and not a matter of the overall players that you have on your team. And as a thing that we do want to emphasize, it's about the balance. So it does look odd having this that same team versus the same team, but since we don't have the balancing within the game for the overalls, kind of have to balance it with each team being able to really choose whatever, but it, in this case, Canada being overwhelmingly the best team in this format, everyone choosing them is Canada versus Canada, and it gives you that balance. It's purely skill versus skill, knowledge versus knowledge, and it makes this tournament so special because of that, because you don't have the overalls playing that big impact that you normally would. And that's where the chess match comes in later on in the playoff stage, the knockout stage, if you will, where you can only pick one team one time. We talked about that a little bit ago. We'll probably touch on that more as we get into later broadcasts. As Maverick trying to tie this game up, his teammate Lady Brunette won just now on the back end of things. He's trying to tie things up to support her a little bit. As Narkuski has it. One goalie for him. Puck battled for in the corner, and it will be Maverick that comes out with it. Maverick having the circle back behind his own net. Gives it to Dubois off the right side. Turns, avoids a couple of defenders. Gives it to Sandheim. Sandheim gets it to the right side. Holding, looking past the slot. Nobody home. And a nice job there from Darkowski, shutting that play down. Gets it now for the zone. Tried to keep with it, and he will. No offsides called. Not a lot of numbers. That's three on four right now. Maverick with the numbers in his advantage in the defensive end. And he'll cause a turnover. And here comes Maverick. Has some numbers. Three on two. Barzil pass across. Lowry shot saved by Dreiger. But Maverick's still on the attack. And it's an own goal. Oh, no. The pass across on Maverick and Darkowski. Barzol picked it up. He put it in past his own goaltender. A distraught way to tie this game up, but nevertheless, Maverick sure not complaining. What a mistake on one side turns into a fortuitous endeavor on the other, and a chance to get that back there quickly. Oh, and Darkovsky trying to get it back. You can see the sense of urgency picking up on his end. He has it in the offensive zone. Gives it up to the point, back to Wall, back to Barzil in the corner. Barzil holds, looking, trying to find something past in the middle of the wall. Gives it back to the point to Severson, and nothing open. This Maverick has space, has speed with Cousins, has a near breakaway backhand saved by Dreiger, and he gets it back. Maverick has it behind the net. Is it, and it's picked up by Shabbat after the turnover. 1-3 to play, we're tied at three. Massive game in the standings here between these two teams in Group C. Shot off from the slot, Wolf. Go on that, a block there from Maverick. Less than a minute to play. Both teams could pick up a point here if it goes to overtime. And Shabbat shot on. Blocker saved by Dreiger. Kuski pass across, picked up. Defensive play made by Maverick. Still loose, picked up now by Darkovsky as he'll give it to the slot. Shabbat has it. 37 seconds to go. Holds it over at the right corner board. Left on our screen pass. <laughs> Goes wide. That was the best chance Darkovsky had, but he's still pushing the issue. Less than 30 seconds to play. Cousins has it. Little dingle in. He scores. Toe drag makes it a 4-3 game. Darkovsky with the skill move takes the lead late in the third. Oh my goodness. What a toe drag. I was about to say, hey, we are going to see our first overtime here in this tournament, but no, sir. Darkovsky picks it up brings it home and now the pressure is on lady uh maverick uh, yet again here to see what he can do to tie this up with 24.3 seconds left oh man maverick may have gotten lost in the sauce on that one he's trying to reply with one of his own dubois has it for him puck loose at the left side and he gets it back just 13 seconds left maverick has it behind the net bars little shot on Quick save by Dreiger. Pucks loose in the right corner. Seven seconds to go. Barzil pinned in at the boards. 
has it is Darkovsky. Two seconds. He'll just hold it. And that will do it on the prettiest play we've seen today. Darkovsky gets a game winner with 30 seconds to play. A 4-3 to three win for him over Maverick. And a massive three points for Poland over Slovakia. And remember, we mentioned if that game had gone to overtime, both sides would have at least picked up one point. Now Slovakia held to none in that game. So three points for Slovakia, three points for Poland. Neither side going to get an advantage. So once again, especially in the case of Slovakia, having an evened up matchup and those plays right there, that can be the difference between quarterfinals and an exit in the group stage. Yeah, it really can. A disappointing ending there. They could have picked up that extra point, forced OT. Darkovsky said, no, I do not wish to have any of that on my palate today. And I'm going to get the toe drag. And I'm going to bang it home. I'm going to put the spotlight on me. I'm going to know that the camera's here. And I'm going to get a win for my team. They did so right there. An amazing performance right there in Group C. We have a lot more to cover. Uh, we'll bring you updated standings, graphics, and more. You are watching the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship. Do not go anywhere. This has been presented to you by Stroda, or Skoda and Strauss. We will not miss a single moment. We will be right back in just a moment. Stay tuned.
stops up backhand and he scores. Uh, I was craving when I scored the goal. The game winning goal. How are you feeling? I'm ecstatic. We are back. Group C picking up in the prime of its part of the group stage as you get an updated look at the standings. Czechia with four games played in the lead as of now with nine points, but right behind them are Slovakia, six points, a two and two record. Czechia, by the way, a three and one record. Germany with those two games played do have six points, so they have the two game advantage over Slovakia. Poland with three points and two games played, trying to creep their way in. They split that series with Slovakia, still have Germany and Czechia and Japan to look forward to. So still a lot to play for here for a lot of these teams. It's Japan still in the running as well, but going to have to win out and have a little bit of help in front of them to get into that top two, the top two for each group, make it into the quarterfinals as Brandon Bixby and Nick DeMeo with you for live coverage of the 2023 IIHFE World Championship presented by our amazing sponsors in Skoda and Strauss. And Nick, we've seen amazing action so far. And now, not only are we going to continue seeing amazing action, but what it means increasing with both of these two playoff spots still on the line. It means a lot, and we're going to keep things going. We're not going to waste a beat here. Germany versus Czechia. This is match number 11 and 12. We're on the PlayStation side. We have a lot of coverage for you today. It is first period action. We are on the PlayStation side. We'll look at the Xbox side here in just a moment. But let's cover what's going on on our screen. Captain Dirty Dangler versus Kirchi. We're watching Kirchi going north on your screen. Again, Team Canada versus Team Canada. And we are off to the races 2-1 to one right now for Kirchi. And if you're Team Czechia, you're pretty happy with what's happened so far as the shot comes around from the outside. Kirchi will hold. Spinning in front. Shot there. Deflected wide. That one comes off the pad. A second effort there, and he scores. Sillinger gets another one. And right now, Dirty Dangler, who was one of the heroes from last year on the ropes a bit midway through their group stage. Yeah, I remember Dirty Dangler. He had that massive goal that helped put Germany in the playoffs. They won that game in overtime last year. They got in by just a singular point. It was a thrilling finish, a last-minute goal, and it was one of those things where we knew from that moment he was a guy that could step up in those clutch moments. But how about Kerchi, one of those newcomers that we mentioned, stepping up for his team in Czechia and making a big, big difference so far early in this matchup. And as we know, with the group stage, Undefeated teams will eventually end up defeated. They'll play each other, and only one team can actually remain undefeated. So we're seeing that kind of take shape here. Two 2-0 two teams as they work into uh, a 3 and 3-0 team now with Czechia versus Germany, who's 2-0. and As things are starting to shake out a bit, that's what makes this really exciting. End of the first period winding down here on both sides, uh, or on this side of the ice. And on the other side of the ice, the Xbox side also winding down. That one is scoreless at the end of one. It is three to one. Dirty Dangler down by two in his one-shot group stage shootout, if you will, Brandon. This is what makes it fun. You got one chance against every team. You got to make your impact. Yeah, and you know, what's big about this too is, remember Czechia, they're already four games in. They'll be six games in once these two matchups on the Xbox and the PlayStation sides wrap up. They're 3-0, and they have nine points. If they beat Germany, who's behind them, they've already split, rather, with Slovakia, they can essentially clinch their way in if they win both here against Germany. So this is a massive matchup here for Czechia because if they win both and get all six points, there's not really anyone else from two on down that can really catch them. And now a penalty coming up here. PlayStation side. And Dirty Dangler on the power play here to get a chance to get back into this one. Self-sauce chipped up for him. Dirty Dangler will recover. Second period underway, both sides. <clears throat> Excuse me, right now. As that's a chance centered in. 
Instead of flipping it out, they'll hold. They'll circle back. They'll send it through the middle. That's poked away. Coming back the other way now for Dirty Dangler. That one's intercepted just as it got through the zone. Backhand pass, shot score. Oh my goodness, that was a through the legs pass. And here we go, a power play goal. It's three to two. And that's exactly what Dirty Dangler needed. All the momentum on the side of Kirch. We mentioned how big this matchup is as Czechia could virtually lock in one of the two playoff spots available. He might not be done and he isn't in a minute flat. Dirty Dangler ties this game up at three apiece, Nick. What a turn of events. You know, the mid 90s ballads must be ringing true in his head. I know our music gets popular over in Germany. Maybe I'll be your hero, baby. Maybe that's coming in right now as something has sparked here for Captain Dirty Dangler in the second period and sure is coming in the trove of two goals for his squad. And now it's a tie game back again. It just started that way. Went up 2-1, 3-1. Now 3-2, 3-3. We're tied. Group C action. Red hot right now is a chance on a breakaway. Forehand shot gloved out of the sky. And that one's played out, but a turnover. Over to the right side. They'll bang that one along. Back in down low. Two men behind the net battling it out. That'll find space to the front, but the pass can't get there. Now it falls to on his knee. Pick that one up. L skating through. Back out to the point and out of the zone. They'll reset. Seven gone here in the second period. That one will bounce back and forth a few times. Now some space for Dirty Dangler. Can he get the lead here? That one's poked free. And that self-sauce might have done him in. You want to talk about heroes, maybe Kirchy might have gotten a little bit of hero ship on that play from Dirty Dangler. You mentioned that little deke there to try to get that extra speed. Might have been a little bit too close to Thompson as after that happened, he was able to just scoop it up and hold it. Faceoff was won there by Germany, but it's back out for Czechia. Kirchy's got it. Trying to speed that one across to somebody. Can't find anybody. That's the end of a sad queen song. Here we go. Right side now, off sides. Midway through the second period. Music puns a putty, Nick. I'm enjoying it so far. The, the action's great. The music is kicking without any music even playing. I mean, what more could you want? I mean, a great matchup. Loving it. You know, we spent so much time with our very good friends, Tugi and Sin, uh, over in the North American side of things. And uh, I was working production for those. And there was made too many times that you all said things that I wanted to make puns for. Well, I'm fitting them all in now, my friend. As they were just in my brain, I couldn't use them. I'm just piling it on. And now I think the answer has been for Dirty Dangler. We have a chance here by Czechia. That's turned over. Is He's done nothing in the second period except listen to Lil John's song. Specifically one. And that's shots, 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 shots. Everybody. But nevertheless, he's got it again. Team Germany. And I will do this literally all day. Do not worry. He's got that through the blue line. Chipped up there. Tried to find a trailer coming in down to the slot. But that's taken away by Team Czechia in Kerchi. PlayStation side. Seven minutes to go here. That one's through the line and onside. Good little feed in front. That one's blocked away, though. That would have been a nice two-on-one. Maybe a would-be goal. Scoring opportunities aplenty right now in this middle frame of this matchup. Midway through Group C action as well, mind you. Behind the net now working. Kirchi on the knee takes a shot. That one's saved. We get a whistle. You're seeing this game slow down here just a little bit after uh, after Captain Dirty Dangler got that pair of goals. Kirchi having to kind of sure up a little bit defensively. And Dirty Dangler, he has opportunities. The question is, can Kirchi maybe get some offense going down himself? Chance here. That one's kicked along. That one's picked up off the board. Nice little feed there. Still in the zone. He'll get checked off of it. And he'll wrap it around. Kirchi slowing things down. That's an almost an Omaha sent up. You don't see that often in 1v1. But the chance there was available on that line change. They'll dance that one in down low. Scooped away. Now pass back out. Good feed over. Back and forth, and he scores. What a beauty of a goal there. Anderson caps it off, but the tic-tac-toe on the give-and-go results in the go-ahead goal for Team Czechia. 
Big play there for Kirchi, and he did it in transition. He hasn't had a lot of sustained offensive time here ever since Captain Dirty Dangler got that momentum going. But what's the best way to counter that? Taking advantage of your transition opportunities. He did that right there. A pretty passing play. And all of a sudden, after all that work, Dirty Dangler back where he was. And more importantly for Kirchi, back up in front here for Czechia. As we're in the last minute here, a chance for Dirty Dangler, and he scores! A response, if any, for Dirty Dangler. And it's tied back up. Back and forth, these two players are going. It's like a heavyweight boxing match right now between these two. Right when Kershaw got the lead, when he felt like he might have had that breathing room, Dirty Dangler yet again comes up in the clutch. As Kirchie looking to get that goal back into the offensive zone. Five seconds to play. Poke checked by Dirty Dangler. And that will do it for the second period. We are tied at four. High flying action between these two sides and Czechia and Germany. And that's not the only place where we have an exciting matchup. It's Poland and Japan. And the matchup between Venom and Yoza. They are currently tied at one. So Japan, a chance to get a point here. And Poland, a chance to maybe get their chances extended as Kirchi in the offensive zone didn't have any space it's two tied games here in group c and a lot of eyes going to be drawn towards the next five to ten minutes between those four squads this is dirty dangler with it behind the net holds it looking for a passing option doesn't have anything so far goes behind the net pass across didn't have that as a little poke checked over by the right post but he still gets possession behind Gets a shot on at the slot, saved again, saved by Thompson again. Three straight saves in favor of Kirchi. Keeps this game at bay. Four to four to score, 17 minutes in the third period. As Dirty Dangler, beautiful spin, backhand pass across. Beautiful play, Dirty Dangler. Limit up to his name, takes the lead five to four. And has a hat trick for his centerman and Kent Johnson. The hats are out and Dirty Dangler doing the heroics. Oh my goodness. That's what we expected to see from him, I think. Germany needed a hero, but they aren't having to hold on till the end of the night. They have one right here, right now in Dirty Dangler. A 5-4 lead, 15 minutes to go over Kirchi and Czechia. We mentioned that Poland and Japan match between Venom and Yoza. They're tied at 1-1. One one. We are going to cut over to that, and Venom just scored to break that tie. So a 2-1 lead for Venom over Yoza. Yoza going north on your screen in the home red can of the jerseys. Venom going downward on your screen in the away Canada jerseys. And as we say and that, it's tied up on the other side. 5-5 five, five now for Kirchi. So just back and forth in these two games. Here comes Venom yet again. Shot on goes wide. So you said it, Nick. 5-5 five to five in that matchup. We will touch back on that matchup here when we do get a chance. We want to give some attention to this one. It's a close matchup between two teams vying for one of those playoff spots. They also trying to get Japan their first win, their first point on the evening. As Venom has in the offensive zone, trying to increase this lead to two. A little self deke there. Couldn't get it to convert. Battle for the corner boards, and Venom comes up with a pass across, won't connect, and here comes Yosa now, gets it to Lowry at the right boards. Back over to slot to Anderson, back to the left side to Gregor. Puck goes behind the net, and Venom will take possession. Moves his way into the offensive zone. Nice job on the poke check. As this is Yoza trying to move things up the ice. Gets in the offensive zone. Pass across. Saved by Thompson. And Venom will play that out. He knows what time of the year it is. It is February. He says we play those. <laughs> I love that. As Venom moves it in. Trying to take advantage of that play. Pass saved on the slot shot from Venom. A big play by Dragger. Yoza has to be sighing there on relief. That was at the doorstep, ready to go home. And the door was slammed shut. No Ooh. cash on delivery here. So Yoza may be escaping one there as he's trying to get out of his own zone. He will do so after a little bit of a scary moment. Now in the office zone, doesn't hold on to it for long. And Venom will now take it in. Come to all with it. Little toe drag. Shot saved on the glove side of Yoza's goaltender. And it'll be another whistle. 36.4 to play in the second. Brandon, this is a scary moment and some scary hours here for these two teams right now. Oh, and here we go. 
Tie it up. Venom wins it. Poke check. Yoza gives chase. He has a breakaway. Batherson, he is not tripped up. It was poked cleanly from behind. A great back checking play from Venom. 2.2 to go. Icing is called, but a huge defensive play from Venom right there. We'll follow the end of this, and we're going to jump at the horn here of the second right back to that Czechia and Germany matchup. So we'll see if Yoza can leave us with a little bit of a goal. 2.1 to go. He wins the faceoff. Slap shot for the far right point. Nothing going there. 2-1 lead for Venom at the end of two. We'll shift our attention over to that other matchup. We just had a goal. Kerchi puts one in. 6-5. to five. Advantage, Czechia. This is picking up here. I was trying to get to it right when it cut over. And, of course, the limelight. There's no Maverick on there, so, so it doesn't happen when we watch it. It happens when we don't watch it. It was an unassisted goal there in favor of Kirch. It was Josh Anderson that put it in. There's less than three minutes to play here in period number three. Can Dirty Dangler get one more clutch moment in him? As he gets it on the defensive play, but getting it back is Kirchy. Kirchy holds pass across. Nobody home. It's turned over. Here comes Dirty Dangler. One for you to play in the third. Moves it up the ice. Gets in the offensive zone. Spins. Cuts to the slot. Holds for a pass. Doesn't have anyone there. Cuts in front. Pass across. Couldn't connect. And it goes all the way to the point. Dirty Dangler still has it, however. Tries to go down low. One minute to play here in this third period. Now 50 seconds. Kirchy moving it up in the neutral zone. Pass it to the left side. Making a line change, and he'll just dump that all the way back in his own end, and him and Dirty Dangler both give chase. Kirchy gets it. Lots of space at the right board. There's no one there. Kirchy going to move it in the zone with ease. Gives it a cylinder. Shot is blocked. And here comes Dirty Dangler trying to get something. 30 seconds turned over in his own zone. Kirchy has a shot in front. Blocked in front, though, by Dirty Dangler. But Kirchy still has it. 23 seconds to play. Up by one. Kirchy just trying to hold on. Dirty Dangler gets the turn over, and here he comes on the counter. 15 seconds to play. Dirty Dangler at the boards, hit from behind, no call. Fair play on that one. As there's nine seconds to play, turned over. Kirchy gets it, but it's turned over in his own zone. Almost got it, the Dirty Dangler, but it's all the way back. He'll get it as goalie does. Breakaway chance for Kirchy, but it will not matter. And that will do it. Chaos at the end, and Kirchy takes home the victory for Czechia. They move to 4-0-1. They hold number one in Group C, and that win could help potentially clinch them a playoff spot, depending on some of the other results around them. Yeah, we talked about that group stage, right? How many get in? Just two. So now they're working on securing that top spot with just two more matchups uh, across the board remaining. Two more slots of matchups, four more games. We'll switch over to the other side now. 3-1. Venom over Yoza as we have the action here, <clears throat> bringing it to you from Yoza's view going north on your screen as Venom comes back down the ice, tried to lay that one in and in front that trickled through was tucked aside. Right side now on your screen, that wide open ice cutting through the middle gets bumped off, shoots it behind the net, gets a little bit loose back there, it's picked up. And it's sent back around and through, but no, a penalty coming up. Power play opportunity for Venom to get that insurance marker, the three-goal lead that everybody tries to seek here. And not just that insurance marker, but remember, every goal matters. The goals for and the goals differential can determine playoff positioning if you are tied in points and depending on how those head-to-heads go. So this is still important as Venom gets one on the board. That's Matt Barzel that puts that one in. And that important goal that you mentioned for a few reasons, Nick, Venom gets it right there on the power play. A power play goal, and you're right. The points, head-to-head -head points, goal differential, head-to-head -head number of goals scored, and then it gets into some crazy stuff, that NFL-style uh, tournament tiebreaker stuff that I don't want to worry about of, like, if it's 70 degrees outside on a Tuesday, then you get the point. I, let's not get into that. They have to score goals. That's the goal of this, lack of a better pun, this tournament here is to score goals, and they're doing so here. Venom up 4-1 with a chance here to make it 5, and he does! I thought that was a save, but it might have just gotten past the glove. It's 5-1 now for Team Poland. And how about Venom after being down in this game early? Yoza really competing there well in the first couple of periods. And all of a sudden, Venom turning it up when he really needed to in this third period. Not sure how much he's watching this broadcast. Maybe saw the check it won. This game being a little bit more because he has flipped a switch here in the last few minutes. 
And do you think the players watch the other feeds or do they just play? I know we talked to some of the top players of NA and they've said no. They don't really watch what's going on. They just play their game. Do you think they do that on the EU side? I, I honestly don't think it's any different. I think that that competitive mindset kind of tells you to worry about your own play. You don't want to have to worry about results, relying on anything that happens outside. At the end of the day, if you take care of your business, you control your own destiny. But now with Czechia being in the position they're in, if they get that second win over Germany, they have virtually clinched their spot. So they kind of get into a position to where it gets a little bit more tempting to game watch a scoreboard watch and see what's happening where, what you need to do. And it can benefit you to kind see what you do need to do do you back off if you're up do you continue to push the issue things like that based off of goal differential to know what kind of is the difference between being in and out can make that difference so there is an advantage to maybe not playing it but i think that in some situations maybe it does kind of help the scoreboard watch and no better place to do it than right here at twitch.tv slash iihf hockey you're absolutely right here as we wind down this matchup matchups coming ahead your way germany versus poland Japan versus Slovakia. Then after that, Slovakia versus Germany. Poland versus Czechia. We'll set up for some of those here as we will probably stick with uh, Team Poland's journey as they will take on Germany here at the conclusion of this competition. But right now, two minutes to go. And I know we've said it before, Brandon, but if you could touch again on the group stage team selection and then how that looks like in the playoff section. So remember, in the group stages, everyone choosing virtually the same team. You can choose another team if you want to, but the reason you're seeing everyone choose Canada is because they are the best overall team in the game. The purpose of this rule is to ensure equal competitive balance for every one of our players. Like, for example, if Canada played against Japan and you had to use Team Canada and Team Japan for your countries, as speaking of Team Japan, they have a goal go in against them. Venom makes it a seven to one lead over Yoza. But going back to that original point, it wouldn't make for good competitive balance. An 86, 87 overall Canada team against the lower 60s overall Japan team in the game. There's no way to balance that out that we are given as of now with NHL 23. So the best way to remedy that, having every team play with those same teams in Team Canada, it ensures that competitive balance that the best player, the most skilled players have that chance to win the game despite overalls being in effect. And then in the playoffs, it gets a little bit more interesting because you can only use one team once per round. So if you use Team Canada in that quarterfinal, you cannot use them again in the semifinal or the final. So a little bit of a strategy game. You have to be strategic with what team you select and win. A lot of times you see teams use Team Canada for the finals and go with maybe one of those lesser teams in the first round and maybe a Team USA or a Team Sweden or a Team Finland in that second round. But as we wrap up here in this matchup, Venom gets the win over Yoza 6-1. to one, 26 shots on that 9-0-1 time on attack. Six goals put in. And if I'm correct, four of those goals all being in the third period. So a massive three points there for Poland. Japan, things looking a little bit trepidatious for them now. Have yet to win a game, have yet to snag a point. Things started to slip away for them a little bit in Group C. But that second playoff spot really starting to ramp up with Poland getting that win. Yeah, Poland moving up the ladder here, and I'm going to check and see if we have our standings feed refreshed. If we do, we'll bring you that here, and I believe we do have that, Brandon. Here's what it looks like right now. So as you see, we mentioned Czechia, and they don't even have that win against Germany in just yet. But if you count that in, that is 12 points to six in favor of Czechia. Then Poland just getting their win over Japan, that will put them at six points. So depending on how the tiebreakers work, they could be where they are at fourth, but just with a chance to advance themselves. Or they could be all the way up to second. It just depends on how those tiebreakers sort themselves out. Then in Slovakia split earlier than in Germany. If I'm correct, there's so much action, Nick. You'd have to double check me on this. I'm pretty sure them in Germany have yet to play. So there would be no head-to-head -head on that in for the tiebreaker. Which one was that? Slovakia and Poland. Germany and Poland. They have not played yet, correct? Yeah, that's coming up next. We're actually going to move to that matchup yeah. here in just a second as we try to get you the updated standings and get you to those games in just a moment. Yeah, so Poland and Germany yet to play. Nothing would affect that tiebreaker on head-to-head -head yet. That would just be purely on goals for, goals against, goal differential, things of that nature. And it will be the same thing, actually, for Slovakia, since Poland and Slovakia split their two games earlier on in the broadcast. So those three teams right now are tied at six points as we speak. Czechia has 12, Japan has zero. That battle for number two is developing into the big story.
as we will get that Poland and Germany matchup here coming up. Slovakia still has Japan to play as they played against Czechia early on and they played against Poland early on. They're playing against Germany, if I'm correct, as we speak. As there is a lot going on here. So as we mentioned, that two through four really going to be the big story. Czechia, if they win, say, one more game, they should be able to clinch having that six-point advantage as they do right now. We're not sure if that's going to be the set way because Slovakia and Germany are still playing. Germany have those two games in hand over Czechia. But nevertheless... That's kind of been that story is that two through four, still a chance that either of those teams could reach and get that number one spot. But Czechia, with how they have been playing with some of the games that they have in hand via tiebreaker, do control their own destiny to that top spot. But nevertheless, the top two teams in Group C do get into the quarterfinals next week. So a lot to look out for here. We're going to have the conclusion of that here in the next 60 to 90 minutes. So we will know here rather soon who will be the two teams out of Group C to get into the quarterfinals. And Nick, it's going to be a lot of fun to see who kind of develops that in because we said that this was one of the more balanced groups that none of these teams really were that much above and beyond the other. And that is really so far played out to be true. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the parity of this group has been so great so far that we've seen some pretty high octane action across the board that's why you see the standings the way that they are and the way it's all shaking out but nevertheless it doesn't stop we have more action coming up here we are ready to bring you the uh germany versus poland matchups here kevinator versus venom and on the other side of the ice we're gonna have captain dirty dangler versus darkovsky and we've seen heroics from both of them so far so it's not like we're going to be lacking quality content here on the broadcast, quality games to watch here for, a lot of things coming up very soon. Uh, but don't worry, we're going to bring that to you in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the 2023 IIHF e World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> And we are back. 2023 IIHF E World Championship continues on here. Nick DeMeo, Brandon Bigsby alongside you for this ride. Kevinator versus Venom. Team Germany versus Team Poland. You are in the Xbox side right now. And we are watching 
Kevinator going north on your screen. As we worked through, this is the fourth set of matchups between all of this Group C. On the other side, Japan and Slovakia is taking place as we speak right now. We'll have updates for you on that as Slovakia looks to get their shot in there, but a chance and a goal, a backhand through the five hole. And my goodness, we're starting it early. Kevinator and Venom, two heroes for their countries are squaring off here on the Xbox side. Starting it early, two heroes from your country, as you mentioned, Nick, and Kevinator, he did this last year too. He showed up in a massive matchup and it was against Venom, if you recall, who used to play for Team Germany. He was with this team in 2020 in that tournament they played against each other last year with what whichever team winning getting the move on to the quarterfinals kevinator clutched up came back from a goal down in the last minute took it to overtime and won it we called that game it's a rematch of that not only is it a massive game yet again this year but as we mentioned a team or a matchup rather between kevinator who's team germany venom who used to be on team germany so storylines are plenty as kevinator gets number two he gets number two with a quickness as you were breaking that down for everybody. We see it happen on your screen. Kevinator wasting no time. He doesn't want to leave this up to chance like he did last game. Oh, I don't blame him at all either. And Kevinator, he's a guy to where when he gets the momentum going, he's really hard to stop. I think he's probably one of the better momentum players that we have in this tournament. He's just really dominant when he has the flow going, when he gets things clicking, especially so early like this. It's so, so dangerous to have to play against. So I'm really interested to see the response from Venom. He knows this. He saw it himself last year. As a response there from Venom. Two to one now is... We talked about momentum players. Well, here's some momentum for you, my friend. You want a response? I'll give you a response, said <laughs> Venom. I'm telling you, Nick, I think they listen to this every now and then. It might just be in the background. It might not be the primary focus, nor should it be for these guys. But I swear, I think they listen. Perfectly timed, perfectly placed play there by Venom. But Kalinator trying to get one back, and these guys are going back and forth. They indeed are. And this is this is ramping up here quickly. Like, I expected a little bit of a bang-bang here with what we saw last year between we saw these two go at it uh, or, 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 or with, the, with the way they shaped it out to be. We've seen Kevinator. We've seen Venom. So, like, we knew what to expect, but, man, not to this caliber. Yeah, this is absolutely insane. It's Kevinator with that 2-1 to one lead, but Venom getting the response and he takes it up the ice and... We didn't really get the chances at the break while we were away. We did get updated results as a chance from Venom. Saved by Kevinator. So this game even more important because Poland did move up to number two. So Germany now being behind them at third. This is a huge matchup for both of these sides. It really is. This is stepping in here as a flying poke check with the backhand anyway. Kevinator goes big, Venom goes bigger, and this game is tied. This game is tied. Germany was up two, now it is tied, and Poland up two in the standings. That is exactly what the Polish fans want to see. They want to try to close the door on Germany in this game, close the door on them in the standings, and right now is their chance to do so. So for Venom to get that momentum back with the way Kevinator started, that is absolutely massive, not just for this game alone, but for their playoff chances. This is a huge swing right there. Give Give Venom a lot of credit with the way Kevinator started. We were just talking about how good he is when he has that momentum on his side. Venom doing exactly what he needed to do to remedy that. He gets two goals and evens it back up. 37 years old, playing like he's 23. You love to see it as a slap shot comes in from the point by Kevinator. And play moves on. Another chance here. Venom back on it. Rebound chance. Scooped out and saved. He's playing it out like you said. It's mid-February, post-Valentine's Day. We throw things out. Kevin Inter now deflected and it scores. Three to two is your score line. We've seen five. If, look, if you didn't take the over in this line at Caesars, you missed out. Yeah, and I mean, this game, you want to talk about classic songs. How about whatever you can do, I can do better. I mean, Kevin Hader just 
going right back after the run from Venom and gets the lead back in his possession. I mean, now the question is, does Venom do it right back again? Does Kevinator increase the lead back to two? We're about to see. And he does. He does. And the momentum has shifted again. Brandon, talk a little bit about here as we take the time out. Kind of takes the uh, the excitement out of the room for just a moment. But I understand why we pause games as competitive players. We use the opportunities to set up uh, timeouts and things of that nature. Talk about momentum in NHL 23. Momentum in NHL 23, it's not king, but it very may well be prince, to say the least. <laughs> I mean, if you have the momentum in your side, it can really change the course of a game. And that's why you see both of these players taking timeouts. It's very rare you'll see both players take a timeout in the first period. I don't think I've ever seen that in at least my short career calling NHL esports. But the reason they do that, they want to try to drain that momentum away, kill it off a little bit, and try to settle things down, get things back to their side. Everyone on their team gets that extra energy all the way back up to 100%. So just to try to give you that extra advantage in terms of the energy of your players on the ice, but to also calm things down a little bit, get some of that in-game momentum to level itself out when your opponent does have that rushed away that Kevinator just seemed to get right there after Venom had just had it. And remember, Kevinator both his goals after he called the timeout. So Venom hoping for a little bit of that same thing. Crazy to go from scoreless first periods to one with six goals now in the first period we see here under a minute to go and I think they all I think they both need a breather here which is probably why you saw the double timeouts nevertheless Kevinator 30 seconds on the clock trying to find his way in spins once now twice backhand chance that one saved off the back of the cage five seconds now pushes him off the puck still has it there's another chance that's off the side of the cage as well and that's gonna do it six goals two teams two countries one period it's four to two for team Germany Two teams, two countries, and two points separating those two teams in two countries for number two in the Group C table. Poland has nine points. Germany has seven. The top two teams are who get into the playoffs as Czechia currently holds that one spot with 12 points. If they win out or at least win one game, you actually assume they should be good. So a lot to play for for both Poland and Germany trying to keep themselves in. There's still Slovakia right behind them at six points. So they're probably watching a little bit. Germany and Poland having to take care of business between themselves as Kevinator makes a three-goal lead right off the bat to start off the second period. Five to your score off that second chance look. He is running away right now with this one. Absolutely trying to get the lead. I think, you know, you have to know what Venom's capable of. You have to know what he's going to do. And after he scored two back-to-back -back on you, after you scored two, you have to keep pounding, don't you? Yeah, you have to keep pounding. And like we said, these two teams are so close. If it comes to a tiebreaker, the head to head's important. The goal four and goals differential is important. Venom, not so fast, my friends. I'm not done yet. He cuts that three goal disadvantage to a two goal deficit. And it's Matthew Barzal that puts it in the net. And as we talked about that, I said, you know what Venom can do? He's going to respond. You have to take away as many opportunities as possible. You're going to get one in. Well, you got one in, but now there's a two goal differential. Whereas before it would have been a one goal differential after that goal. So here we go. Back and forth we go. Kevinator looking to get that three goal lead back. Venom looking to take advantage of what they say is the worst lead in hockey. We'll see if he can do so. As Kevinator moves it up the ice. And on the other Where side of the, the options here, Brandon, just to let you know, the PlayStation side, I don't see any movement on that Dirty Dangler Darkovsky game. So I'll let you know what's going to happen there. And we may turn our attention just to check on what's going on with Japan and Slovakia. Yeah, I remember Slovakia right behind these two teams. So Slovakia, if they can take care of business against Japan, they would be put in a good position. You kind of have to wonder, do they prefer that one team goes ahead and wins out? Do they prefer that they kind of split between one another in overtimes to get less points? A lot to think about here for Slovakia, who are right behind them at fourth place, but do not have the advantage in their favor in games played. They have already played four games. So you kind of have to wonder here with Slovakia. They got to take care of business. Nevertheless, despite this result, regardless of what happens. As play continues on, two-goal lead midway through the second period and this game. Xbox side. It is Team Germany versus Team Poland. Kevinator 
versus Venom. We're watching Kevinator. Both teams pick Team Canada, so it is a mere stick skill competition. And nothing more. I guess line changes and strategy also play into it. But it's not a uh, being hamstringed by your teams overall. Instead, you both play with the same team. And I like that we can touch upon that a lot, Brandon, as we move through this broadcast. New viewers here. We welcome everybody coming in. That's really what it's about. Community being explained what's going on, what we're trying to accomplish as we go icing here. 9.17 to go in the second. Yeah, so as you mentioned, Nick, this is Germany versus Poland, and it's two players per team, one on the Xbox side, one on the PlayStation side. They will match up against the Xbox and PlayStation representative on their opposition country, and both players had to qualify their way in, playing against the best in their country in their respective console. The winner of that earned their way into this tournament to represent their turn, or excuse me, their country with their respective teammate. For example, this Kevinator and Venom both players earning their way in for Germany and Poland for their respective console being the Xbox side so they match them against one another representing Poland all the points that are accrued from those teammates add up together for their respective country as a unit so it is a 1v1 game with a team oriented element as Kevinator looking to help his team out with that goal right there 63 lead over Poland and Venom and that is huge right there Nick Huge indeed, a three-goal lead at this far into the game. Never say never, but now at least you're in the driver's seat to bring this one home. As we'll see if he can bring this one home. And you mentioned the other matchup on the other side between Captain Dirty Dangler. We'll get you there. As we'll actually switch that now in Darkovsky. Yeah, I was just about to say. <laughs> as it will be those two matching up. Is is six to three Kevinator in that other matchup? He will potentially wrap that one up if anything crazy happens we will let you know and get you to look at it but until that happens we will have this one Darkovsky in the home reds going downward on your screen while it's Captain Dirty Dangler going to the north of your screen in the away Canada jerseys nice the puck battle for it down low and you kind of get a feeling early the pace of this game pretty rampant so far it could be a high flying one nice the puck in the offense zone for Darkovsky gets the shot off but it's saved and played back out immediately. As we keep it going here, and we'll be cutting to in just a moment here, in the third period, we'll go check on what's going on with Lady Brunette and Yoza, Team uh, Japan, up against Team Slovakia. We'll see if we see any amazing highlights from Lady Brunette. She's been pouring on a lot of goals in the last several of her matchups. Yeah, she lost that first game versus Pepa Costa, one to nothing. That was our opening game between Czechia and Slovakia for our featured matchup to start the broadcast. She lost that game one to nothing, but ever since then, she has been on an absolute tear, just putting the puck into that like nobody's business, and it's been insane to watch. We'll see if her efforts are rewarded with a playoff spot as these two teams in Germany and Poland trying to make sure that doesn't happen, but they have to go through one another first. So we'll switch over right now. Let's bring you Lady Burnett and Yoza. Team Japan versus Team Slovakia, third period. We want to make sure we're representing all of our countries as well as we possibly can, despite uh, what the score lines might be. Every single person here did qualify, as you mentioned, Brandon, to get to this spot. And it's deserved that we recognize those efforts as appropriately. Yeah, they deserve their time. They deserve their recognition. You know, I, I know that with certain tournaments there's going to be teams that someone has to finish last in their group and it doesn't mean that that team is any worse or lesser or anything like that it's just that all these players are the best in the world they are the best in their countries for their respective console for a reason and at the end of the day someone has to play somewhere and you're kind of seeing that with some of these results japan being a team that earned their way in yoza a player that earned his way in the last two years in a row so Obviously, a great player, one of the better that you will find, not just in his country and his continent, but globally as well. Just when you're going up against other players of this caliber, it's just one of those things there's going to be a winner, there's going to be a loser, and things just kind of shake out one way or another. As do not forget, Ladies later today, Group D coverage. Sweden, France, Norway, Switzerland coming to you here 
at the end of our Group C coverage. Don't don't forget to miss out. To, don't forget to not miss that coverage. And then tomorrow, Group A and Group B will be our broadcast with our featured matchups of Finland versus Latvia. Big things on the line there for Team Pride in this tournament this year. And the U.S. versus Canada will be midway through our broadcast tomorrow. Action starts same time, same place tomorrow as well. Now is going to be an absolute doozy. We didn't get to see the U.S. play Canada last year. They were in different groups. The U.S. made the final. Canada, they were upset, however, in, I believe, it was the quarterfinals. It was Czechia, actually, who defeated them in that quarterfinal last year. So didn't get to see Canada and U.S. We will get it this year as they happen to match up in the same group. Going to be a lot of fun. And obviously, Finland, as you mentioned, trying to defend their two straight championships. Eki winning in both of those years with a different teammate has another one this year in Yesi. Right now, it's all about Japan and Slovakia. And speaking of Slovakia, Lady Burnett puts on another two to eight year score in Slovakia, really putting themselves in a good advantage here in terms of the goals for a goals event. And Lady Burnett, she is really put on the load in that category for her team. Absolutely. As we mentioned, teams connecting all across the globe to play these games we saw some crazy things happen with that kind of uh home ice advantage if you will with team ukraine last year as we'll turn our attention over in just a moment back to dirty dangler and darkovsky who are just wrapping up their first period no score in that contest That's a little bit under nine minutes to play as lady brunette with the puck tripped up and, you know, we, we kind of talk about the Slovakia team, Nick. It was an interesting dynamic. Lady Brunette played for Slovakia in the 2020 tournament, did not make it into the tournament last year. Slovakia, a little bit of a disappointing run, but right now, making up for it a plenty and then to pairing up with Maverick, a player that has a lot of experience but has yet to be in this tournament, it's been a pretty nice little dynamic duo so far. Both of them have stepped up pretty admirably, and if things go right, they still have one more matchup after this Japan one, if I am correct could see themselves in a playoff spot because of it. Yeah, they could. We'll look at the math here once it checks out in just a moment. But let's get you over to that action we talked about a little bit ago. Dirty Dangler, Darkovsky. Start of the second here on the PlayStation side. It's no score. No score, as you mentioned. And here comes Dirty Dangler looking to change that. Actually, that's Darkovsky is a big save for Dirty Dangler. He can make the saves, too, when he does so right there. As Darkovsky tried to get the pass across, could not. And here comes Dirty Dangler moving it up the ice. He is moving north of your screen in the away Canada jerseys. And as it's picked up by Darkovsky in his own zone, and he'll try to move things up. As it with Dylan Cousins, moves it to the slot, gets it to Wah, Wah holds it, trying to circle around, and he'll go down low. Bars with a beautiful spin move, shot across, big save for Dirty Dangler. That's Dragger to make that one, flashing the leather and then some. And here he comes on the counterattack. Tries to glide his way to the slot, didn't have the space. Great job by Darkovsky to defend that one. It's an offensive shot on the rebound was denied by Dirty Dangler. It's turned over nearly immediately. Now Darkovsky will pick it up. It's turned over in the neutral zone by Darkovsky. Here comes Dirty Dangler. With it, passed over to the right side, couldn't connect with Lowry. A little bit too much sauce on that one. But it's turned over, and Dirty Dangler will get it back. That's behind the net, pinned against the boards. It'll be turned over, Darkovsky has it. And here comes Dirty Dangler now after the turnover in the neutral zone. Shot on, glove saved by Dreiger. It'll be held on for a whistle. Offensive zone faceoff coming up here for Dirty Dangler. And as we see on the other side here, I'll let you know, Lady Burnett obviously winning that matchup against Japan. Uh, but on the other side, Kevinator up 7-3 to three against Venom. So the answer to your question, can Kevinator continue his heroics? Yes. He will be winning this game 7-3, to three, maybe 7-4. to four. Time's winding down about five seconds to go. But that's going to do it for Team Germany's side on the Xbox portion of their competition. It's a little big. Three points for Germany makes it even more important for Darkovsky now to pick up three points, really, not even just two. As 
A goal for Germany. Dirty Dangler glides his way through the slot, puts it past Dreiger, and it's a 1-0 lead for Dirty Dangler. And we just talked about how Kevin Ayer took care of business. Maybe Dirty Dangler heard that a little extra motivation to get the three points for his country. It is picking up, indeed, the opening goal over there, and stats are starting to come in. We're going to need to take a look at the standings here in a little bit just to see where all the teams sit. But right now, action is heating up, and we've got to really be keeping an eye on the points totals for these clubs. Yeah, because I'm looking at it as of now. We'll get the official confirmation, but... Poland and Germany, they were at four games. Poland was up by two in the points. With that, Germany surpasses them at number two. Ten points compared to nine. So Germany, as of now, holds that number two spot. Slovakia is just a few points outside of them with that win from Lady Brunette. So I'm doing the math on everything. I believe one point separates all three teams, and each of them have played five games. So tons to play for still big game for germany big game for poland and it's dirty dangler and darkowski that are going to have to decide it between themselves as darkowski trying to get the time goal but here comes dirty dangler shot on in front saved but he still has it in the offensive zone it's going to be turned over and darkowski will get it trying to work his way into the ozone does so, but it was poke checked and it's turned over after that. Bars all over to Batherson. Here comes Dirty Dangler. Has some space. Puts the puck on that save. And he still gets it back. And gets it to the left corner board. It's just turned over. And now Darkovsky looks to operate into the offensive zone. Doesn't get it, however. And it'll be Dirty Dangler trying to break things out. And do not forget, we'll stay with this action. And we will make sure we tell you who moves on from Group C to get to the playoff phase, but we have action coming up as well. Upcoming matches we have not finished yet on Group C. This one you're watching right now. Match 17 and 18, Slovakia and Germany coming up after this. And then at the same time, Poland versus Czechia, match 19 to 20 coming up after this. Then at the same time, we get into Group D action. Sweden versus France, match 21 and 22. Antonio and Ekin versus El Guaje and Rezorg. I am probably butchering those names. I'm doing the best I can. But they will be coming up as well. Six games will take place at the same time, and then that will lead us into Group D action. We will bring you updates. Stay it right here because we got, we got a ton of action here. We got to know who moves on from Group C first before we get to Group D, Brandon. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned Sweden. They had that really disappointing result they were the top team in the group stages lost to latvia in the quarterfinals and i think what was one of the biggest upsets in the history of this tournament last year ekin was on that team you know he's going to look for some vengeance they have been so close to that title just have not been able to get it could this year be their year their journey will start right here tonight but business to take care of first between germany and poland 15 seconds to go this is darkowski with it looking for the tying answer he has it over to Korobor, spins his way to the slot, couldn't hold on to it. Puck will be dumped away, and that will do it for period number two. Dirty Dangler gets the opening mark. He is up by one, a chance to really put Germany out in front in the standings of Group C over Poland. And Darkowski, the biggest goal, arguably, of his esports career up to this very point. You know, when you mentioned a little bit ago, Ekin and a lot to prove. They're in a favorable group this year, I think, at least in Group D. I, I would imagine if you were being pressed, you'd probably say they're the favorites in the group. So a lot of pressure on them to get out of the group stage and really make an impact and get themselves positioned soundly into the playoff phase. Yeah, and I think that's a good point because it's not even necessarily because of the teams that are in their group, but they have one less team than every right. other group does. There's just four teams in Group D in Sweden, Switzerland, Norway, and France. So kind of has that advantage, one less matchup that you have to really worry about, but it also makes the room for error a lot thinner. So Sweden going to have to be on their game. Going to be fun to watch both Ekin and Antonio Manon, who is in his first IIHF tournament work here tonight but like we said more pressing matters here in group c as germany and poland as here comes poland a chance for a coast game fly punk check save by dirty dangler he'll hold on to the whistle that is a huge huge turn of events oh my goodness 
the fact that he came out for that again the flying poke jack and he was able to make that save this time huge momentum shift there for dirty dangler and if he doesn't flying poke check, that looked like that was the tying mark. Is here's Dirty Dangler trying to get in the offensive zone. Wrap around it. Is it going to be a penalty, I believe, as well on Darkovsky? So from a potential tie situation to almost allowing a goal on the wrap to now a penalty kill for Darkovsky going just down, down, down of every possession. And I know Dirty Dangler, he's hoping to take that one more notch with the goal. We'll see if he can. Operating in the offensive zone is Dirty Dangler. Pass behind the net. It's Cousins. Holds it. Works. Trying to find the play. Doesn't have anything yet. It goes down to Barzal. Barzal trying his luck. Looks around. Still has it. Gives it Shabbat. Quick shot on. Easy save there by Dreiger. And there's 43 seconds to go on this power play for Dirty Dangler in Germany. Puck turned over, did sit, Darkovsky does, and he'll move it into the offensive zone, not looking to dump it, he wants to score. Has Dubois over at the faceoff circle, pass across, nice pick off there by Dirty Dangler, even strength now, but Dirty Dangler still with a chance, there's a nice poke check from Darkovsky, and now he has a potential opportunity. Two on four in favor of Dirty Dangler, puck across, a couple of defenders there, and those numbers made a difference, a few sticks getting in the way of that passing play. Here comes Dirty Dangler. Nice little L2 move. Wrap around left side. Easy save by Dreiger, and he'll get it back and work it to the point. Try to go back down low. Picked off there by Darkovsky, and he'll try to break this thing out. 11 minutes to play in the third period in this oh-so-critical game between these two teams. Just a point separating Germany and Poland. Germany holding the number two spot and the lead in this game. It was a big save for Dirty Dangler, but Darkovsky still pressing. Gets it to Cousins, pass across the wall, big save by Dreiger! Darkuski still has it for another big save and it trickles in! <laughs> one to one on the third opportunity. Poland with a huge play. It may have not been pretty, but the pressure that Darkuski puts on rewards him with the gold timeout to be called. How big is that group C just flipped on its head in a matter of seconds? And you see that a lot in traditional hockey, the momentum, the fatigue, the pressure. It all mounts together, and it usually ends like that. We see it in NHL 23 as well. You keep pounding, you keep pounding, you keep pounding. Eventually, it breaks. The dam broke there, and we have a tie game late in the third. Arkovsky looking to break the dam a little bit further. He's moving into the offensive zone. Holds it, it's turned over. Here comes Dirty Dangler now on the counter attack. Transitioning into the offensive zone, does so successfully. Holds it to the left side. Looking for a passing option, goes down low behind the net. Tries to walk back over to him, it goes to Barzil and it hits the side of the net. Batherson still has in the slot, pass across to Barzil, but it's picked off by Darkovsky. Five and a half to play in period number three. They're tied at one. One point separates them in the standings for number two. The Top two teams in the group get into the playoffs. A massive five minutes on your screen. That's the pass in front, followed by Darkovsky. Holds it, looking for something. Goes to the slot, slap shot saved by Dreiger. And it will be Dirty Dangler to pick it up. Three and a half to play in period three. Dirty Dangler just going all the way back. Neither side wants to make a mistake. Three minutes to play. Breaks it in. Dirty Dangler holding it to the right side. Goes behind the net. Looking for something. Gets to the Johnson. Tries to get a backhand. Another save by Dreiger after the first one was made. And here comes Darkovsky. Three on two. Nice job from Dirty Dangler getting back. Causes the turnover. Poke checked in front, but picked up by Dirty Dangler nevertheless with a minute and a half to play. Moving into the offensive zone. Gets into Johnson. Raise back to Johnson at the left corner board. Lowry down low, back up to Cousins to the slot. He's tripped up. So a power play chance for Dirty Dangler. He's been really good on the power play so far tonight. And a chance here if he capitalizes could put Germany in prime position to be in position. Here we go. Tied up, won by Darkovsky on the penalty kill. Dumps that all the way down. 42 seconds to play. Dirty Dangler not able to get anything. Darkovsky shot on save by Dreiger. 
Taking to the left corner board. And Narkowski still has it. 30 seconds to play. A minute 35 to go on the penalty kill for Narkowski, but it's looked more like a power kill so far. Finally gets it off the stick, does Dirty Dangler, and he'll, he'll go to operate up the offensive end. 20 seconds to play. Spins his way, right boards, tries to go to the slot, no room, goes back to the point, gives it to Shabbat over the bottom right. Looking for something. Shot, he scores on the pass left side. That's Dylan Cousins with 11.5 to play. Dirty Dangler takes the lead. A pivotal goal there for Dirty Dangler on the PlayStation side for Team Germany. They needed that point there. Now can they hang on? He won the faceoff. He has the puck. Five seconds. Dumps it down low. Batherson has it. It's taken up by the goaltender for Darkovsky. Slap shot. Last chance. It was on net. Saved by Dreiger. And that will do it. Dirty Danglers here. Rowers continue. A 2-1 to -one victory. A power play goal of 11 seconds to play. And Germany sweeps Poland in the two matchups. A critical six points they pick up. And Poland, if they miss out on the group stage, the last 20 minutes that we've seen on this broadcast, that is what they will look back on. Uh, and, and Brandon, we're not wasting any time. I just, in case you needed to take a breath, you don't get to have one. None of us do. We move on. Match number 18, Xbox side. Lady Brunette and Kevinator from Team Germany versus Team Slovakia. This is the contest to watch now, especially after that point. We'll get a standings update at intermission. We'll watch what's happening on the other side with Dirty Dangler versus Maverick. Stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. Here we go, Kevinator and Lady Brunette. And if I am correct, if my math serves me right, Slovakia up to 12 points with six games played. Germany, 13 points with six games played. Poland has nine, so it's going to take a ton for them to get back in. So this matchup, Slovakia and Germany could very well decide the last playoff spot available in Group C. This is the Xbox side with Lady Brunette and Kevinator. We are looking on the end of Kevinator, the home team moving moving up on your screen, north on your screen in the all black kits while it's Lady Brunette moving downward in the white Canada jerseys. Kevinator moving in the offensive zone. That shot on the one time was saved by Dreiger. Lady Brunette now will move it up. She has been on a scoring clinic in the last two games that she's played in. Here comes Lady Brunette, and she gets the backhand, the goal through the five hole. Lady Brunette gets the scoring party started. One to nothing, continuing that little bit that we had just talked about. Well, that changes a little bit, doesn't it? And things have moved in the other direction now for Team Germany. They have had an up and down roller coaster all series long so far. So Slovakia fans everywhere with a little bit of a wider grin on their face. As remembered, still business to be taken care of. There's another matchup that will be happening at one point or another between Maverick and Captain Dirty Dangler. And Nick, that's going to be one to look out for. Both of them have been just dynamic offensively. They play very similar styles of play to an extent on the offensive end. Going to be fun to watch that, but it's between Lady Brunette and Kevinator right now, as Kevinator has in the offensive zone. Patterson shot on really in close. No danger there. And Lady Brunette coming in on the counterattack. Tries to move it th through the middle of the neutral zone. Couldn't do so cleanly as Kevinator will pick it up in his own end. 11 and a half to play here in period number one. Lady Brunette up by one for Slovakia. Playoff spot on the line between these two teams. Poland on the outside looking in. They're going to need a little bit of help and then oh. some as a chance for Kevinator. Backhanded and didn't have the room to get that through. Still has it at the back right corner. Holds, looking for space, gets to the bars on the slot. Looking for something. Trying to find it, not looking at the point as of now. He'll just go ahead and operate it down low instead after circling around. Barzel with it. Holds, trying to work his way in front. Shot on, saved by Dragger. Another shot saved by Dragger. Battle forward behind the net, and Kevinator still comes out with it. Nine minutes left in period number one. Barzel's shot goes and hits the right side of the net. Another chance. Backhand goes wide up high. Kevinator still applying the pressure. Gives it back over to Barzel down low. Holding it, looking for something, puck in front, and Lady Brunette finally comes out with it, just comes out unscathed, and here she comes on the counterattack, Comtois with it over at the right side, and now she'll go behind the net with him. Comtois looking, holds, trying to find anything she can here is Lady Brunette, trying to find that play in the slop, and nobody available to her right now. Six minutes to play, gets it in front of the save by Dreiger, and Cavanator will play it out. 
Picking it up is Cavanator, getting it through the neutral zone. He's left the left boards. Looking, finds Mercer. Saved there by a Dryger on the shot, but another chance for Cavanator. Raw has it at the right side. Moves into White Cloud to the left point. Moves inside, pass down the backhand shot, actually. Will hit off the pad. And now Lady Brunette will try to take it up in transition. Turned over right as she crossed the blue line. And Kevinator looking to get something to go. 3.30 to go in this first period. High flying action here early. A lot of action here early on the other side of the ice. The PlayStation side has begun. Maverick versus Dirty Dangler. We'll keep an eye on that. We have new standings in. We'll go to that here at the intermission. Lady Brunette in control of the puck here, trying to increase her lead to two, but it's turned over, and here comes Kevin Nader. Johnson with it, right side. Looks up the boards, trying to go slot, couldn't get it as he didn't have the room, as there's one twain to play, one minute approaching. It's a fast minute in the first period. Kevin Nader has it behind the net, trying to get that pass across. He couldn't connect on it, as he turned over, though, by Lady Brunette in her own end. Still having it as Kevinator. 19 seconds to play, now 10 seconds. And Lady Brunette will create the turnover. She speeds down the left boards. Looking, getting for something if she can behind the net. No room on the pass. And that will do it for period number one. Lady Brunette up one to nothing. And that is critical because of what is on your screen. Wow. Six games played between our top four teams. Japan officially eliminated. They have played all their games. They are done. They are out for the tournament. Tournament. Poland back four points of Germany, back three of Slovakia. So essentially... If Germany can win out, they are in. But if Slovakia does the same, they are in. Poland, they're going to need a lot of different results. I don't even know if it's mathematically possible for them to get in because Germany and Slovakia are playing one another. It would be a minimum of four points that they would gain. So I, I don't really think that there's much that Poland can do. So it is between these two countries, Germany and Slovakia, Lady Brunette on the Xbox side playing against Kevinator up by one for Slovakia, but Kevinator looking to tie it up. He has it right now. Shot on. Glove saved by Dreiger. And Lady Brunette will hold on for the whistle. To your point about the math, four points would get them 13. If Germany drops both here, it won't matter because the head-to-head, -head, Germany has it over Poland. So basically, Germany is in good shape if they win. Poland does not get in at this point. Slovakia on the fence right now. Absolutely, and I don't think it would affect him for Slovakia either because if I'm correct, Slovakia has that advantage and the goal is four and the goal is differential. Remember, we saw Slovakia and these two teams play between them and Poland. They split their matchup earlier on the day, so the head-to-head -head in terms of the results would not make the difference as Lady Brunette moves it into the offensive zone. Didn't have anything. Kevin Ayer looking to counter. Still no score on the other Kevin side, Ayer. by the way. First period, 11.55. Maverick versus Dirty Dangler, no score. And that is on the PlayStation side. You're looking at the Xbox side on your screen. Kevinator holds it. Trying to get Germany back into a tie situation. But a big save from Dreiger. Here comes Lady Brunette. Almost turned it over, but she will get it back, and it'll go all the way back to her own den. She'll reset. 14 to play in the second period. It's in neutral zone. Looks like she was tripped up there, and she was delayed penalty. And Lady Brunette, a power play opportunity. And this is a big chance here as this game is stalled out over the last few minutes to get some momentum here if you are uh, Slovakia. Face off to the right side. As Barzil gets it for Lady Brunette. Moves it to the point to White Cloud. Back down to Barzil. Barzil looking, trying to find something. Lady Brunette moving it down low now. Looked like she was going to go slop, but opted not to. Trying to find something. She plays this possession game well, just waits patiently for her opportunity. Had a chance there. Hit off of the post from the looks of it. And Kevin Dater will have it. Pressure being applied to Lady Brunette. She'll create the turnover. Here she comes, looking for something. Holds. Looking. Pass the cross backhand. Saved by Dreiger. 35 seconds ago on the Slovakia power play. Here comes Kevin Dater. Nice saucer pass to the left side. He has space. Looking for something. Goes behind the net. Doesn't have anything from the looks of it. And it looks like that'll kill off the remainder of that Lady Brunette power play. So back to 5-on-5 five five hockey. Moves his way in. Pow! He couldn't get the rebound off the pad. As it's almost an own goal. But it is held onto by Dreiger. So after all the possession time, a couple of scary moments there if you're Lady Brunette. But she comes out of it unscathed. But still... 
doesn't take care of a defensive zone face off for her. And at the end of this here, I'm watching the other side at the end of their first period, still scoreless here. At the top of the second, we'll go over to the PlayStation side with Maverick and Dirty Dangle. So we'll switch over to that side here later on, but one to nothing, Slovakia, if things were to stay the same, they would be through. Germany looking to change that. Kevinator moving in. Spins his way to the slot. Doesn't have anything. Goes back down low and could not find space. And here comes Lady Brunette. Trying to find anything. Beautiful pressure by Kevinator on that four check. Not able to get past the defensive zone. She finally does. And she has a little bit of space here as well. Trying to pass it across. Got it back. We'll just shoot that on. Saved by Dreiger. And Kevinator will play it. Later moves in and saved by Lady Brudette. Held on for the whistle. 6.42 to play. Slovakia currently in as things stand. But we still have action going on in the other Slovakia versus Germany matchup. That's Maverick versus Captain Dirty Dangler. We will switch up to that matchup here momentarily. As we are there right now as this top of the second period. Nick, you mentioned it's scoreless right now when... Let's see what Maverick can do. Can the rookie hold on or does Captain Dirty Dangler have another year of heroics in him? He did it last year. Can he do it again here for his country? Uh, if he does, I got to talk to Alex, a.k.a. Bloody LP, one more time because I know he's going to be on cloud nine. We'll see what he can do here. No goals scored in this matchup through one period. Germany's got to score. Basically, they're one point ahead. They've got to pick up points here by winning games. Winning is the only way they can get in. If Slovakia gets the three right now from Lady Brunette, it would put them up two as a chance there saved. And that would mean the only way that Germany would be 100% secure is a regulation win. So that first matchup of Lady Brunette and Kevinator, that is the one that has a lot of the weight on it right now. Once that game concludes, that will immediately shift to this game. But equal importance as neither side really knows what the other is doing unless they're communicating with one another. But obviously that focus is going to be dialed in. We kind of heard last year in the final where between Finland, US, Eki, and Vatu, yeah. they were in the same chat talking. And yep. it's a little bit of a different situation because it's not just a first goal wins. You have to play the whole game and get the win. So neither side knows what happens. This is a win and in situation for all four players as far as they're concerned. Absolutely. And we're under a minute on that other bracket, uh, other matchup. We're going to go over to there at the start of the third period. Since they're ahead in the action, we want to stay with them first. But figured we'd show you what this looks like as well as we have no score through the middle portion of this game. No score. And here's Captain Dirty Dangler moving his way into the offensive zone. Gets it through. Cycles around. That's Graves. In the bottom left corner, shot hit the back of the net. So here we go. Let's pass across. Oh. Puck loose in front. That was a dangerous chance. Another pass across. Couldn't get through. Another backhand is saved by Dreiger. And Africa will hold on to the whistle. But Germany in both of the games, the last few chances, really dominated by both Kevinator and Dirty Dangler on your screen. Yeah, huge opportunities there. It's been getting to the door, but not getting through. Goalies and defense, they're playing astoundingly well so far through this contest. They've knocked, they've knocked, and they've knocked. Will they finally get an answer as that play goes off sides? 10-20 the play as we will shift over to the Xbox matchup of the, between these two countries, Slovakia and Germany. This is the game right now with all of the tension. Lady Brunette leads one to nothing in favor for Slovakia. It would put them ahead of Germany for now, but no more, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Kevinator finds the tying answer. We're tied at one. A huge goal opening up the third period. Germany said not yet, not done. They get the tying goal and with plenty of runway to go, they have plenty of time to try to get ahead or can Lady Brunette answer the call? And it looks like she's going to call a timeout. We talked Smart. about how big momentum is. It looks like she's going to call the timeout here, potentially, to calm things down. So one to one there. We're tied in the Xbox matchup. We're tied in the PlayStation matchup. So it is anyone's playoff spot right now as we speak. And then Brandon, if, wins the face -off. Brandon if you wanted a doozy here as we watch the action on the ice here, on the other side happening at the same time, Poland versus Czechia. Czechia, four to two, Kerchi over Darkovsky, and 11 to two, 
Pepka over Venom. They have made a statement here in this group stage this year. So Czechia clinches the number one spot and that officially closes the door on Poland. They lose their last four after looking good early on, which means that without any conclusion whatsoever, this is for the final playoff spot in Group C. Slovakia and Germany. You're looking at the Xbox matchup. This is Lady Burnett with it. Working her way through the offensive zone. Circles around. Goes aside. Has space. The shot goes a little wide. Might have hit off of the stick of Dreiger for Kevinator. And here he comes to respond. He's up the right side. Has it. Goes to the corner board. Holding for something open. Can't find it yet. Trying to get the pass across. But hit the side of the net. Finds his way to Johnson behind. Johnson circles his way around. Just trying to find a little bit of something here. Nice job from Lady Brunette. Kind of collapsing. Maybe that's a game versus Pepka. Compare, kind of, excuse me, it kind of gave her that advantage for something like this. There was a lot of that in that game. It prepared her for it as the pass goes in. Our own goal. Kevinator gets the advantage. Germany up two to one. I believe that's our third own goal we've seen in Team Germany play. And an unfortunate bounce there off the stick through the legs of Lady Burnett's goalie there in Team Canada uh, for Team Slovakia. Uh, yeah, for Team Slovakia. And like, man, that's unfortunate for Lady Burnett. She's got to bounce back here. And remember, there has to be at least one point gain for Slovakia. There can't be two regulation wins. Otherwise, Germany would get through already having the one point advantage. So that is a massive goal for Kevinator. The pressure shifts now to Maverick, but a chance for Lady Brunette. A breakaway. She scores on the forehand. Lady Brunette ties it up at two. I said she had to answer the call, and she did. An emphatic goal there by Lady Burnett to tie this one back up and reset that score line back to two each. How about Lady Brunette getting the goal in a clutch situation? We've seen Germany do that time and time again over the past year. But this time, Slovakia getting a little bit. Here she comes. She's not done. Backhand saved by Dreiger, but she still has possession. Moves her way across. Forehand this. It's saved by Dreiger again, but Lady Brunette still in possession. Holds it. Looks. And it's battled for, and Kevinator comes out with it. He'll move it up the right side. Two to two, your score. Nine minutes left in regulation. Kevinator in the offensive zone. Come to a pass on Mercer. Saved by Dreiger. Kevinator still has it. Looks, spins his way to the slot, passes over to Comtois. Comtois moves the slot, shot blocked in front, goes out to Mercer, and he'll pass it out to Shabbat. As the puck will go past the blue line, and he'll have to reset the neutral zone. 7.30 to play. We're tied in both the Xbox and PlayStation matchups. Terminator just working his way around. Gets it to Comtois. Back over, and he scores! Pass to Mercer at the right post. Two to three, Kevinator up. With six minutes left and no score in the other matchup with Maverick and Dirty Dangle, that is a huge goal right now for Team Germany. Massive. So now Germany in good position. We saw them have this happen a few minutes ago and Lady Brunette responded accordingly. Does she have at least one more in her? You need one more so and one, then one more. Order. Yeah. As here we go. Kevinator with possession. Holds backhand. Wrap around. Saved by Dreiger. Still has it. Diki holds it the left side. Circles around. Puck was poked and he got it back. Sandheim, the white cloud to the left point. He tried to move his way across. No space. 430 to play. Puck goes away to the other end. No icing. And if we want an update on the other side, Captain Dirty Dangler with what looks to be... 15 minutes to go in the third. Just got his first goal. It's one nothing for Team Germany on that side. So Germany in control of their own destiny if they can hold on. Makes it even more critical for Lady Brunette to score right now. Less than three minutes to play. Holds. Looks. Doesn't have anything. And it'll be Kevinator moving it up the ice. Moves his way past the defender. Has a little space. Pass across. Saved by Dreiger. That was going to go in if the goaltender didn't make the play. Then that right there just keeps Slovakia alive. It very, mel very well may have a huge save there. And about 100 seconds left on the clock. Face off to the left side. Won by Kevinator in the offensive zone. 
He just has to hold on and not allow a goal. And then all the pressure will shift to the other matchup on the PlayStation end. He cycles it around, pass a save by Dreiger. He doesn't know the situation, keep that in mind so he can't just hold on. He thinks he has to win this game regardless. So he can't just hold it, he has to try to go. He doesn't know what's happening on the other end. Here comes Lady Brunette, 40 seconds to play. She turns it over in the offensive end. Passed up by Kevinator, tries to break in the offensive zone, but a nice hit by Lady Brunette at the right side boards, left side of our screen. She moves it into the neutral zone, 30 seconds to go. Can Lady Brunette put in a clutch win for Slovakia? Has base, pass across, nice block in front by Kevinator. 24 seconds to go now, couldn't get past the neutral zone as it turned over. Here comes Lady Brunette, moves it in, in the offensive zone, holds it forehand, backhand behind the net. 15 seconds, she still holds it. Has to get some shots on quickly. Come to all with it, battle for it. Lady Brunette comes across with it. For Hayes, scores! Lady Brunette gets it for Slovakia. We're tied at three. With the time winding down, Brunette scores that goal and we could possibly see overtime. Slovakia is still in this. How about that Germany was just seven seconds away from potentially clinching. Lady Brunette gets this extended, but can Kevinator get one? Here we go, he gets the face off, five seconds, shot on, backhand, Paklu, Shabbat gets it for Lady Brunette, and that will do it, extra hockey, both teams secure a point, but remember, they were separated by a point, so it will be a two, Point grab for whoever wins this game. So at the very least, Slovakia would tie in points if Lady Brunette gets the win. If not, then I believe Germany would go up by three points or two points rather. They get two points for the overtime win. So then Slovakia okay, can we'll score on the two. other side and we got to do math. <laughs> yeah, it would go up two, and that would mean it had to be a regulation win on the end of Maverick to secure their place. It would all come down to tiebreakers if it was an overtime win, and then again, you have to remember, Germany would get a point, so it has to be a regulation win if Lady Brunette doesn't win this. Here we go! Pass across, puck goes in from back, hit save by Dreiger! She still has it behind the net. Looking for options, turned over, and Kevinator gets it. Moves it up the ice. The tension absolutely palpable right now. He moves his way through, backhand loose. Picked up by Lady Brunette, and she'll move her way up. Cousins has it poked at the blue line, however, and here comes Kevinator. He'll move it all the way back, couldn't connect on the pass. Lady Brunette gonna apply a little bit of pressure, but backs off of it. Two minutes to go in the third period on the other side. As Captain Dirty Dangler does up in that game over Maverick. Here's Kevin Nader with it, holds it at the left post. It's Poke checked by Dreiger, pass across in front, has some space, couldn't connect. And Lady Brunette, she knows the situation. She doesn't care what month it is. She's holding on to it. Very good, smart move there. Uh, I think the month doesn't matter when it gets this close. <laughs> Absolutely not. We're going to switch real quick to the other feed. The so we're switching really fast. 34 seconds to go. This is Maverick who has the puck in his own end, or in the offensive end. Gets it back. Oh, we're going to come back. And we're going to come back now. So we're switching simultaneously. Now Lady Brunette has it. Look, I'm just this watching. This is both. overtime. The Xbox side. Now it's Kevinator moving it up. Looks, holds, moves to the slot. Pass in front, or shot in front. Puck loose. Dragger gets it and holds on to it. Three to three in overtime on the Xbox side. Now to the PlayStation side. Last gasp here, Kevin, or excuse me, Dirty Dangler rather has it. He's bumped off, holding, looking, spin in front, just trying to kill time. That will do it. Germany wins that in one. In that matchup, as Dirty Dangler I wins that's that it. one. And I, yeah, I, I believe you're correct. They had the one point advantage, so that puts them up four. So if I'm correct, Germany just clinched their way in regardless. We'll have to double check and make sure Lady Brunette does not know the situation, neither does Kevin Nader. So they're both going to have to play as if this is for the pop, for the last playoff spot as Lady Brunette has the puck. Speeds her way through. Holds, trying to find space. Holds it over at the boards and she's poked off of it. Gives it back down low. Picked off as that play is. And I believe if our math is correct, Nick, you were right. That did clinch Germany in. And it's the shot from Kevinator. Blocker save from Dreiger. Holding it now. Looking shot on. He scores! Kevinator gets the win over Lady Brunette. No math needed. The so 
which the, the situation is solidified. Germany is moving on to the quarterfinals. Five of the six points to secure their spot. Czechia will join Team Germany and punch their ticket in to phase three of the playoff stage of the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented by Skoda and Strauss. Congratulations to Team Germany to fight their way to get into the playoffs. And you know, give Slovakia a world of credit. They took Germany to the very brink an overtime decider in a one goal game on the other end in regulation is what it took. Germany had to scratch and claw and fight their way through. They just seem to like it that way. They just seem to thrive with it that way. It's the second straight year that it took this right here to get them through the quarterfinals. But Kevinator and Dirty Dangler, when the lights are the brightest, when the pressure is the tightest, you know what they say, pressure bursts pipes or pressure makes diamonds. Germany has a pair of diamonds in Kevinator and Dirty Dangler, and those diamonds are shining bright all the way to the quarterfinals. Well earned, and once again, credit to Slovakia, but Germany doing what they needed to do in that win and get in matchup to move their way on to the quarterfinals, taking that second spot in Group C. Oh my goodness. Poetic there as well, a Rihanna reference. I know you didn't intend to make that, but you absolutely <laughs> did. Regardless, uh, let me say this. Hats off to Lady Brunette. Hats off to Maverick for a heck of a performance to make it that close. And I know their dreams are, are dashed here in the group stage yet again. But man, a good performance by them as well to get it this close. Hats off to Team Poland as well. But we cannot waste a moment, Brandon. We just, we just don't get the option to waste a moment, Brandon, we turn our attention to the next matchups, do we not? And we're going to take a look at the standings here in just a moment as well. We will, as we mentioned, that last spot was between both, excuse me, Germany and Slovakia. Czechia clinched that number one spot early in the day. They only lost one game. And Nick, how crazy is this? The one game that they lost to a team that is just on the outside looking at in Slovakia. It just goes to show you, I mean, honestly, all three of these teams were quarterfinal worthy. I truly, truly believe that, but only two can get in. Czechia secured their spot, and Germany in the head-to-head -head versus Slovakia. It was going to be decided by that. Get their spot in, and I'm, I'm even looking at it further as we pull the standings up here in a moment. Slovakia has scored more goals than anyone in that group, 38 and they're wow. going to be on the outside looking at it. just goes to show you how deep Group C is. So much excitement to start out, and you just kind of have to feel for them because being in a tough group like this, you could argue in any other group, they get in with the way they played, but only two can make it. Czechia and Germany, two teams that made it to the playoffs last season, returned some of that experience. Germany returning both players from the 2022 run while Czechia returned Pep Costa. And for Slovakia, despite the great run, just a little bit, outside despite all of that just goes to show you how tough this tournament is group c lived up to the hype and it's czechia at number one germany at number two they are your playoff teams for group c and slovakia on the outside again with i believe it was 13 points with that point from lady brunette poland will end with nine points at four after the promising after the promising start and japan unfortunately blanked in their group with zero points did not get any wins or overtime losses so no points for them but nevertheless a honor to represent their country and really interesting too because they actually played some tough games i thought that they deserved at least a point or two nevertheless but group c i mean so entertaining we're not even done for today we're not even done we're not we have to turn our attention sweden's already been off to the races against france switzerland and norway got into it a little bit and then we have norway and sweden versus france and switzerland i think we're bringing you the latter of those two matchups and then our ending featured matchup will be back on facebook and twitter with uh sweden versus switzerland so many matchups so much action we're just getting started don't go anywhere. You're watching the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. We'll be back in just a second.
And welcome back to the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. Nick DeMeo, Brandon Bigsby alongside with you. We're in the live standings right now. You see it right there. Czechia and Germany move on in Group C to playoffs phase three. But now, Brandon, we turn our attention. Group D already underway. And this is what we're looking at. Sweden, Switzerland, Norway, and France. And there is your updated standings. Time has not stood still. Time has moved forward. And in that time that I said that, Ekin has already scored three goals in three minutes against Norway in this matchup right now. And things are about to get really real for him and his team. A lot to play for, as you mentioned, Brandon. A lot of pride for Team Sweden. A lot of retribution for Team Sweden. A lot of historic moments for them to inch their way back to the pinnacle, the top, the horizon. They were ousted last year, no longer. Ekin and Antonio set forth to battle today to accrue points to punch their ticket as first place. That is what they want. Anything less will be secondary to their ultimate goal, which is to not only get into the playoffs in phase three, but to punch their ticket as the final champions atop the mountain for this year's IIHF E World Championship. If you were ready before with what happened in the theatrics and the momentous occasion that was Team Germany and Team Slovakia in overtime with Team Germany continuing their heroics from 2022, you are in for a treat. Two more matches today, Brandon. We have our first one right here and we will bring you the action as it happens. Have I said enough to set the stage for you today? I don't even want to say anything else after that. That felt like enough alone. That was beautiful. Are you ready to run <laughs> through the wall? That's what I need to know. <laughs> I am ready to run through the wall. I mean, if Slovakia and Germany didn't have you ready to run through a wall, then that alone has you ready to run through three walls after that. We obviously have the featured matchup to talk about after that, but let's talk a little bit right now as things look a little bit uh, established here as the flurry we missed at the beginning of the matchup here. Team Norway, comebacker after not nominating a team in 2022. Sooth98 and Robin, Xbox and PlayStation oppositely there. Both started playing a while ago. And uh, for our good friend over at Sports Gamer, Sooth98 played the Elite Qualifier, got in. Yes, and that's with Edinburgh Hockey, the new Edinburgh Hockey as they changed rosters over the offseason over there. So congratulations to Suf on that end of things. But he's a guy that can do it both a 6v6 and 1v1. I've covered him a little bit over there in the ECL. He's a guy that really does know how to set plays up and can put the puck in the net. And that's a very big trait to have is to be able to facilitate. And speaking of facilitating, not many better than Ekin, one of the best 1v1 players in Europe, showing why a fourth goal right there on that play, Nick. Yeah, Ekin definitely a top five player. You got a lot of other players over there. They're like, obviously, Eki we'll see tomorrow. Uh, you've got Kape as well. A lot of really good talent. The new the new talent that's coming up as well. The recent uh, amazing performances by some of the younger talent in, in the NHL GWC. So a lot of good talent. Ekin sometimes gets overlooked, but I would not rule him out, especially when he's openly said he loves this uh, home and home type performance as we see him make his statement here in matchup number two. Match one, by the way, both Antonio and Ekin put up six goals each against France. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned it, Nick, a little bit there in that just powerful introduction. It felt like I was listening to a WWE <laughs> promo, the way you were laying that one all out. But Ekin, he's a guy that he's represented Sweden every year of this tournament. In 2020, they fell a little bit short to Eki and Finland. As you mentioned, they were finalists that year, just fell a little bit short. Last year in 2022, dominant in the regular season, arguably the best team during the group stages. They faced off against Latvia, who just squeaked their way in with their group, got, I believe, 13 points in the group stages, barely got in. All of a sudden, Latvia comes in, shocks the world, and beats Sweden in a thrilling do-or-die tie-breaking situation to knock off Sweden. It was an upset for the ages. 
Ekin is back. He wants vengeance. He wants to get that trophy. It's the one thing that he's not been able to accomplish. He has Antonio Manning with him this year, who really is a capable 1v1 player on his own end. It's going to be so much fun to see how they play it. If I'm correct, Ekin and Antonio Manning used to be teammates on Granite Gaming. So they were. not only do they know each other in the 1v1 end, but they have a little chemistry on the 6v6 end as well. They were two wingers on those Granite Gaming teams. So, and we switch over to his former teammate in Antonio Manon, who down three to one early against Suf, who was trying to put on a nice performance here for Norway. And we're watching Suf go north on our screen right now. We're watching the Team Norway feed. And you're right, these teams, they, these players on Sweden, they know what they're about here. We'll watch this one as well, because obviously points are plenty in the other matchup. We can talk a little bit about Norway and what, what they've accomplished. You mentioned uh, Arebro and the new team there. Robin starting with NHL 99, but the newcomer, another one here with Sooth, and a third place in the Swedish Championship League. A lot of crossover, which I love, and I know you do too, with all of the work that we do uh, with Sports Gamer and their broadcasts for the IIHF, will be on next week, but here comes Antonio to cut into that two-goal deficit. And that's the thing with Antonio. He may not be a guy that has his name mentioned amongst some of those elite players in the 1v1 scene, but he definitely is up there, in my opinion, even if his name isn't mentioned as much. Maybe use the word underrated. How about this, Nick? To get here, he had to go up against Esdor one in that game wow. so it's one of those things to where he's shown he can beat top players Esdor is one of those players that would be mentioned in that conversation don't sleep on Antonio man and maybe he's the secret sauce that can get Sweden over the hump the way they've been inching and clawing towards over the last couple of years and there's another goal that one tricked and tumbled and stumbled and bumbled their way into the goal and it's back up to a two goal lead for team Norway in Sooth that newcomer we talked about yeah, and once again, Suf, he's a guy that has that ability to really facilitate things with the puck. He does it in sixes, he does it in ones, and you see a lot of times when you have that skill set, it transfers to one or the other. I know there's a lot more to manage and to think about when it comes to 1v1 in terms of what your opponent's going to do. There's a lot more overall strategy game because you're having to factor in the AI around you as Antonio Mann and putting on a little pressure, but Suf, he's a guy to where he has the skill set and the hockey IQ to handle it. He's showing it so far in this game. Off the post and in with Barzal, the Superman slide. And Antonio just answering back. He's up against the ropes. He punches back. He's still in this. He's still in this indeed. And Antonio, man, and he's a guy that he can score in droves. So don't be shocked if he maybe gets on a run. And maybe Suf has to call the timeout. We've seen the timeout work a few times so far today in some of our games. So second period here as we've kind of talked over uh, the top of these matches just to let you know what's been going on. A lot of things took place in the three minutes we were on break, plus what happened in the Group C finality that was Team Germany going up over Team Slovakia. Heck of a performance over there. And, like, this is why sports are so great. You can't script this stuff, despite our producers in our chat. I had to ask him if he did script it because of something we were working on, but he didn't. He told me he didn't. I trust that completely, and this is why. You see some great, great play when it comes down to representing your country and to seek out championship for these squads here today. Yeah, there might be questions about the NFL, but there is no script involved <laughs> with this. This is pure competition pure skill and pure storylines it does not get much better than this you have to love it <laughs> i like that i like what you did there eight nothing by the way in the ekin versus robin second period just started over there so that's gonna take its time to wind down second period ending here but antonio picks up the loose puck right there in front of the slot and he drives it home and this game is tied with the horn sounding here shortly for the second period and we just said it a few minutes ago, Antonio Mann, and he is a man that can score in a hurry. You see the example of it right there, right when Suf seemed to have this game in his grasp. He might not be done, and he's not! He takes the lead in the latter stages! I was looking over to my notes to grab another talking point, and by the time I could do that, he scores again. Unreal. So from 4-2 to 5-4 in a matter of minutes, I know I said it a few times, I'm just saying again, they hear us, I'm convinced. They hear us. They hear us. 
And we also got to go check in on Team Germany's uh, broadcaster, uh, Alex, Bloody LP. He's probably on cloud nine, still coming down from the high that was that overtime game. Oh, man, and I wouldn't blame him. And I mean, he's getting more good hockey if he decided to tune in a little bit longer as Norway and Sweden going back and forth in this matchup. The PlayStation side between Suf98 and Antonio Man, and Antonio Man, and looking to continue this unreal run that he is on. He has gotten it flowing and then some in the last five minutes. Yeah, finally took the lead here. The offensive zone right now. Yeah, took the lead in this contest now for the first time right at the end. And what do I always say? You do not want to give up a goal in the first or last minute of a game or, or of a period. We know why. It is a momentum changer. And we've seen it time and time again. Game management will be crucial to the championship team, especially this year. Yeah, and you're kind of already seeing shades of that because with Team Germany, they had to thrive off of those quick goals. I mean, you even saw with Lady Brunette, she gave her country a chance to stay in it with a goal with seven seconds left. And Antonio Manon piling it on, and they're going to pile hats on the ice to top it all off. A 6-4 to four game, four unanswered goals for the Swede. What a routing of comeback for Team Sweden. And Antonio Manon right now putting himself in the captain's chair so that Ekin is not the only name you think of when you think of Team Sweden. He's trying to get another working it into the office of Zoden. You know, we've talked about Antonio Manon a little bit, but you kind of look at Norway. I think many people expect Sweden to come out of this group D. It would be shocking, quite frankly, if they didn't. But that second spot, it's pretty up for grabs. Switzerland, the team that could very well get their way in. They made it to the quarterfinals last year. Norway, a team that, as you mentioned earlier, coming back after not nominating a team in 2022. And then France, a team that was disappointing a little bit last year, but they only missed by six points, and it was behind the U.S. and Switzerland. So two really tough teams in their group played well enough to maybe get their way in if they weren't in as tough of a group as they were. You know, what's interesting about this tournament as well is that some of the names that you think you would see, you're not seeing in the competition. This opens up an opportunity for some of these newer talents or maybe those underdogs, those sleeper pick talents, to make a name for themselves in the NHL eSports scene for 1v1. Yeah, I'm trying to do so here, and Antonio Mann, he's a guy that I know that a lot of people on the EU scene are plenty familiar with, but like I said, maybe he's a guy that's snubbed a little bit when talking about some of those top-end, upper echelon 1v1 players. I think he's trying to silence some of those doubts right here. He comes back from 4-2 down, puts four straight in against a guy that is a plenty capable competitor in Suf. I mean, like we mentioned, he's a guy that may not have been in the IIHF tournament last year, but... I mean, he finished third place in the Swedish Championship League, so he has shown that he has the ability to compete at a high level. You're absolutely right. And that's really what it comes down to is can you win in other places? Can you compete outside of this tournament? And if you can, you could probably make a name for yourself in the tournament. And we're seeing that action right here. It's Antonio Mann trying to work it in the offensive zone. A little bit over five and a half to go here in the third period. Suf trying to mark a comeback. Puck loose in front there after that backhand pass would not connect. As Suf, the time starting to run a little bit thin on him, but a poke check for him there. Maybe a chance to get something. Holds it, looking, doesn't have anything so far. Nice defense from Antonio Mann. And that's another factor to 1v1. I feel like people get really involved with a lot of the goals and the quick plays we see but that defensive ability is something that really makes a difference it makes the impact in a lot of these games between winning and losing i think that's the noticeable difference in some of the top tier players everyone goes oh same goals oh this is the game we play no the reality is it's the defense that you do to stop those goals that's the key and we see that when it comes to the best players on the ice representing their countries uh a 10 piece and an extra tendy by the way on the other side as we start the third period for Ekin, he's well ahead. 11 to nothing is your scoreline over there. Nothing like that extra chicken tender in the box. You just feel a little bit luckier when that happens. You but really nevertheless, Suf trying to maybe feel a little bit of luck as time's starting to expire on his hopes. 45 seconds to play down by two. Antonio Amanda maybe trying to put on an insurance marker, not able to get that chance to go. And Suf will go ahead and try to count it. Five seconds to play. Suf moves his way past, holds it, shot on, saved by Dreiger for Antonio Manon, but Suf still applying the pressure. Antonio Manon 
gets it behind the net. 20 seconds now to play. Delayed penalty called on Souf. And if there were any doubts, I think that that penalty might have just put any of them to rest. I think you're right. On the other side here, looking at France versus Switzerland. 3-0 France on the PlayStation side over Hoffy. And 8-2 on the Xbox side for Switzerland. Tron, we remember Tron from last year, over Razor. So a split differential right there as well. As it looks like, I think Suf is just going to go ahead and hold this one on. He doesn't want to try to go. And that's an interesting strategy because, remember, the goals for and the goals differential do mean something. So that that's an interesting. He had some time to maybe get one more rush. You never know what could happen. But you know who's not taking off the back pedal? Ekin. Another goal for him in that game against Robin Nielsen. And it's a lead for Ek and the Swedes just looking as impressive as ever here in this matchup against Norway. 12 to nothing to score. I mean, he's a point away from having two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. Hey, you got the two touchdowns. Not all kickers we learned this season can kick extra points anymore. So maybe they just got two touchdowns. Yeah, I'm not sure if Ekin is a Cowboys fan or not, but I don't know. We'll see here if he can convert on his. Still plenty of time. 12 minutes to play in the third period. It's a 12 to nothing game. But you made, you made, a, just you made a good point, Brandon, about how many goals you need to score. Maybe that was a rookie move by Sooth, who's new. But to your point, every goal matters, especially when you get to the fact that, looking at my sheet here, goal differential is the third tiebreaker. It's yeah. points, it's head-to-head, -head, and it's goal differential. If, if, if you have to get to goal differential, you need those points. And if you're Sooth, you're not looking at what's happening on the other side of the ice. Or if you are, you know you need the goals. Yeah, and I think that's why it's such a big thing. And you mentioned it. You don't know what's happening on the other side of you. He has no clue that Ekin is up 12 to nothing right now because he's focused on his own game and trying to win. So you can't really consider the fact, oh, my teammate is down X amount of goals. I need to try to get a few in to try to pad that goal differential up a little bit because when he held that, I think it was around nine seconds left on the clock. So that was purely a decision of just trying to get through that game, moving on to the next. But the question is, will that impact him later on? If he ends up in a situation and his team ends up in a situation where they're competing for that number one or number two spot and it goes to goal differential, that means something. It absolutely does. So we'll have to keep an eye on how that shakes out. We'll pull up the standings here in a little bit as another one there. Hey, there's your extra point. So there we go. Ekin getting a 13th now. And I mean, we've talked about Sweden, the story with them trying to get that first championship in this tournament coming close in 2020, upset last year by Latvia in 2022. Is it safe to say they look on a mission, Nick? Because I think they look on a mission. I think they do too. Just guessing, but it sounds like just, just a hunch. They may or may not have taken it personally. We're not too sure with the 13 goals from Ekin and the six goals from Antonio Manon. 19 combined and Ekin not done a nearly pretty move there on the backhand spin. Didn't get it to go. But if you're Norway, it feels like one of those matchups where you just got to chalk it up and focus on the next. Because remember, only four teams are in Group D, so there is less room for error. They still have to play France and Switzerland in their next two matchups. So also oh, important that they win their next. As we turn it over to France and Switzerland, who are currently playing against one another. And how about France, a team that we mentioned could maybe be a sleeper team, only six points out last year, taking care of business here in the matchup against El Guage and Hofe. Is that how you, El Guay, that's very friend, a nice job, man. Uh, yeah, you're right, the newcomer, another newcomer in Jonathan Baptiste, El Guaje, beat Multisanti, remember him from last year, in the qualifier, and uh, has gotten in. Just started playing, played NHL with NHL 01, but his biggest success, what you're seeing right now, qualifying for this tournament and making a statement in Group D, where as you mentioned, every point matters on the other side well in hand is tron 11 to 2 over razor but we'll talk about team france's razor dylan lamonier returnee from 2022 and won his xbox game in the group stage against ukraine five to four back-to-back -back qualifiers for his country and as you mentioned we see a goal here by switzerland's hofi 
as you mentioned, more on Hofi uh, later when we talk about him in the uh, feature matchup with Sweden. But every point matters, and not only that, the second position in Group D is up for grabs. So maybe France gets in and gets into the playoff phase. Yeah, and like we said, they were close last year with Multisanti and Razor. They were only six points out. That's two wins. It was a really tough group. The U.S. was dominant in that group at number one, but don't look too ahead, France. We may not be done. Two straight goals for Hofi. Cuts that lead from four to two. Still 58 seconds left. Nick, we've seen this before. Could still make something happen. Man, we've seen this plenty of times before. I'm a little bit worried with what we're seeing right now. Uh, anything can happen when you watch a, a 1v1 at this caliber. As Ophi has it, the others don't puck loose at the blue line, and he just avoids danger. Does El Guaje as he'll try to move it up and maybe break it a sweat a little bit here. El Guaje moves it in, gets it behind the net, and it's going to be a delayed penalty, it looks like, on Hofi. So, Maybe some of those chances dashed a little bit there with that mistake, trying to be aggressive, trying to cause a turnover. Really not much other choice, but unfortunately that aggression passes the line that's drawn. It's going to give El Guaje a power play for France. So we'll see how this shakes out. That's probably going to be it. But nevertheless, a good late stage performance there to try to pick up two as Ekin won his game 15 to nothing. So that's uh, two touchdowns, an extra point, and a two-point conversion. Yeah, I could decide to go ahead and go for the two-point conversion there at the end. He's an aggressive head coach playing the analytics. <laughs> uh, Mike McDaniel would be proud. A <laughs> little bit of riverboat Ron in him, to say the least. But nevertheless, I don't want to confuse anyone that's not too big into the American version of football. We're talking about a different football than what they're even used to here on the North American compared to the European side. But... Nevertheless, El Guaje wraps this game up. It got a little bit scary at the end, but he gets a 4-2 win over Hofi, which is big because, like you mentioned, Razor dropping that game 11-2 against Tron. So kind of saves France a little bit. They end up drawing points 3-3 three three in that match against Switzerland. Two teams that I think many feel that at the end of this thing could very well be vying for that second spot. Absolutely. So we'll look at the standings once they all update. Two more games are in, but we are in a position to do something pretty great. We're going to be switching over here shortly to the featured broadcast. We'll bring you that in a little bit, and we'll set the stage for what's going to be coming up with our Sweden versus Switzerland matchup. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Two teams that made the playoffs in the 2022 rendition of this tournament. Both teams got bounced in the quarterfinals. Switzerland lost 11 to 8 to Finland, who eventually won the championship, as we mentioned. While for Sweden, I mean, I feel like we've said it enough. I'm sure if Ekin and Antonio are hearing it, they're probably tired of hearing us saying it. But that 8 to 9 quarterfinal loss to Latvia after that parallel overtime. So two teams that have proven that they deserve to be here, two players for each side, or one player for each side, rather, two in total, that return for their country from last season. So going to be a lot of fun to see how they match up against one another. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's talk about it right here uh, in just a little bit. We'll bring you the breakdown of this matchup in the next three minutes. But for right now, let's bring you an updated, uh, hopefully updated uh, standings. I'm looking at it right here, just waiting to see how that will all come together because I think Sweden now moves up to uh no they're two and oh yeah they'll be four and oh yeah so we got to get yeah. the, the the standings updated here on group D we'll get that to you in just a second but let's turn the table let's let's set the stage if you will welcome everybody if you're watching on Twitter and Facebook greetings this is the 2023 IIHF e world championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss Nick DeMeo Brandon Bigsby across from me right here. And uh, albeit we may be on the Eastern time zone and Central time zone in the U.S. Good evening overseas if you're watching. I know most of our friends and uh, fans of the show are watching over there. It is evening time for you. Group A and B will be tomorrow. You'll watch that right here with Team USA, Team Canada, and all the other favorites with Team Latvia, etc., taking place tomorrow but right now we have one featured matchup for you to round out our broadcast it has been a rapid i can't i'm turning around it's three o'clock eastern 
right now for me. And I, I don't know where the time went, Brandon. I don't either, man. I mean, if, if you're just now joining us and maybe you missed a little bit earlier, we had an absolute barn burner in Group C where Czechia, they clinched that number one spot, but it was number two where all eyes were drawn. Germany, Slovakia, and Poland, one point separated those three teams with the last four games. Both Slovakia and Poland played Germany. And how about Germany? As they have the last two years with Kevin Nader and Dirty Dangler. They did it last year in 2022. They turned the page in 2023 and write a similar chapter. Coming up clutch in the pressure spot. Get themselves into the playoffs with a win and end situation over Slovakia. And you got a feel for Slovakia, as we mentioned. Scored what was it? 41 goals. The second most of anyone so far in this tournament. Only allowed 16. But Germany in the head-to-head -head handling their business and now we're seeing Group D start to play out here is like we mentioned four games played for some of these groups there's only four teams in the group so some of these guys only have one more matchup we're gonna find out our two playoff teams here in less than an hour so yeah. things shaping up rampantly here in the IIHF E-World Championship where else would you rather be, whether you're on Twitch with us at twitch.tv slash IIHF Hockey, or whether you're with us on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube, we appreciate you taking your time to join us and would be remiss to not mention our amazing sponsor in Skoda and Strauss for their amazing support. It's been so fun to be a part of this, Nick, so fun to call. We have been treated to just an absolute dandy, and it's just day one. We've got even more tomorrow. Norway and France coming up uh, on the back end of this featured broadcast, but you're going to be watching Sweden versus Switzerland. So let's turn our attention and our pages over to that matchup. We've seen Tron last year. We know what he's about this year. Back in up against a tall task here with a red hot Sweden. Yeah, and we said it. If you remember that name, Tron for Switzerland is because he played in this tournament last year for Switzerland when they made it to the quarterfinals. But he's had some success outside of that. He's a two time E. NLA champion, which is the Swiss championship. For those that are not familiar, he was a semifinalist in the East Bangler Cup in 2021. Also played for the Italian team in this same tournament back in 2020. So he's a guy that has a lot of experience. He's played in this tournament every year that has been a part of, and he has made an impact every single time he's been here. So he's a guy with experience. He's a guy that's won. He is a guy that knows how this tournament works. And against a team like Sweden on the other side that has a lot of experience and a lot of skill, a guy like Tron is so, so valuable to have in your country's favor. And on the other side for him, his teammate in Nicholas Hoffman, a.k.a. Hoffy. Yeah, Hoffy, he has not got a lot of history, but he's got a lot of skill. I will tell you that much. You mentioned it earlier. His biggest success is this right here, qualifying for this tournament. And if you look down the list, he just started in NHL 10. He's relatively not new, but just started compared to some of these other guys. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how he makes his impact in his debut in this tournament. So let's watch it now. Switzerland versus Sweden. You are watching Ekans feed going north on your screen. Both teams team Canada. Antonio and Hoffy underway here shortly. They haven't started yet. Here comes Ekin. He's going to be in those whites going north on your screen. Be sure to watch what he does here against Tron. I've covered Tron back in a Gamer Saloon day as well. Tron's been around a long time in a bunch of different ways, shapes, and forms as Ekin misses that one out to the point. And he'll recover that in center ice. Passing it back to slow it down. Ekin's control here is something to watch as Antonio and Hoffy's match is just now starting as well. So we'll bring you those updates as they happen. I'll bring them to you as I can. Brandon Bigsby, Nick DeMeo, IIHF E-World Championship for 2023. It's our last matchup of our first day of the group stage. The one-time chance comes across. And it's unlike Eki to give up those chances. The defense broke down there for a good scoring chance for Tron. Yeah, you don't see that often. And when Tron has those chances, he takes advantage. You talked about that veteran experience. He's a guy that when you make a mistake, he will make you pay. Ekin, very fortunate that he didn't allow a goal on that. So here we go again. Ekin. Skating through. Look at that skill stick. Just left and right. In and out. He moved that along, but lost it at the blue line. White Cloud collected for Tron. He'll bring it down. Stop there at the blue. Right point. Circling across the center point area. Now left side, Graves. Graves up right side, center point. White Cloud. Holds. 
Tries to bring it down low, does. Good pass down low, keeps it going, bumped off but stolen. And now Ekin, staving off that pressure, keeping things to the outside, just try to cut through the center. That attempt will be stopped short, and Toronto come back around. L skating through, found some room in the high slot, didn't pull the trigger, that he does! Oh, and he had a chance there, but he couldn't pull the trigger. It was blocked in front there for Ekin. Very fortunate, Tron. Second straight chance that he almost had to get the game going. Tron is knocking, but he can't get through yet. Ekin shot there. That was his first solid chance of the game so far. Halfway gone through the first period. Now controlling by Ekin. Team Sweden. Seven minutes gone in the other matchup. Antonio and Hoffy, no score there. Holding, lots of patience. This is the European style hockey I love to see. Just biding time, picking spots, and executing. Will it work here against Team Switzerland who are looking to get that number two slot? It's open for anyone, as you said. Can it be done here? We'll have a live standing update for you now that that's through in just a moment. Sweden, if you want to break that down here in just a moment, Brandon, we can talk about that at the stoppage here. Here's a chance now for Tron off the pads of the goalie. Back out for Tron, another chance. Back up top. Gonna find a lane through. He'll skate around. Nice shot on. That was second effort and he scores. The opening goal here is for Tron. Team Switzerland, they were pushing. They finally get it through and it's one nothing here in the first period. You said it, Nick. He had been knocking and knocking and knocking and finally the door slammed through. Tron getting exactly what he needed. And that is a big goal because you talked about that playoff picture. Sweden currently is in first with 12 points. Switzerland is right behind them with six. One win would get Sweden locked in with that number one spot. And they are actually locked into the playoffs regardless. They're nine points ahead of third of Norway and France who are tied with three points. So Sweden is in the playoffs. They have taken care of the job to get to the quarterfinals, but it's that number one seed that you want because it affects the matchup that you have for the quarterfinals. The big race is once again for that number two spot. Switzerland holds it with six points. Norway and France play one another. They are playing as we speak right now. There needs to be some help from Sweden for one of those two teams to win. And not only that, but if I'm correct, it would have to be a clean sweep of all six points from either Norway or France. And Switzerland would have to lose at bare minimum one game, potentially two, depending on the tiebreaker. So Switzerland's in a good position, but they have to get some points here. Norway and France play one another. One of those two will knock the other out. And it's going to have to more than likely be all six points collected by one of those two teams to get themselves in with some help from Sweden beating Switzerland. Norway up 2-0 and 1-0 in their games against France. So that should be something to watch for as Antonio is up 2-0 right now in the first period against Hoffi in the PlayStation side of the Team Sweden versus Team Switzerland matchup that you're watching right now is our featured, our second and last featured broadcast of today. Two more tomorrow. Mind you, check your broadcast schedules. Middle of each set of groups. Group A, Finland and Latvia. Group B, U.S. and Canada. 10 games, or sorry, 10 slots. 20 games to cover 40 matchups tomorrow. That's happening then. This is right now. Two seconds and one. We'll close it up there. Let's switch over to the Antonio and Hoffy matchup as we got that in front of you as well. To nothing. You're watching Hoffy's screen going north. So Team Switzerland on this PlayStation side is who we're following here going north on your screen with that blue marker dark jerseys. Final minute here before we switch back to see what Ekin can do in his contest. Back skating there. That's Antonio trying to get a third one before time expires. Can he get there? Wraps it around, finds that back feed. Back skating. Got one and scores. So a shot off the pads, the rebound opportunity. A sprawling goalie cannot keep it out of the net. It's 3 0. How about the stick to itiveness there from Antonio Manning? Got that original shot on, put on the rebound, it popped out off of that right pad of Thompson. And then, how about Antonio Manning recognizing that, knowing that that could pop out that way, got his man there in Dubois to get that second chance. And this is big because Sweden, as of now, they will have that number one spot clinch no matter of how this Ekin and Tron games go. But this is big because of what Switzerland looks at. And right as we say it, Ekin ties it up at one apiece. That can take it a page out of Maverick there. 
with the goal on command. It is 1-1 now. As it looks like the other matchup, at least for now, three goal lead, good shape. That can change. Group D here, this is the matchup you want to watch. We'll keep you updated on the other side as well. Norway over France, 3-0. And tied 1-1. Robin and Razor tied 1-1. So we'll have to keep an eye on that matchup at the same time. But none of that matters if Sweden wins here and Norway wins over there. That, that seals it for Switzerland. They've got to at least pick up one here before the math gets really, really interesting. So here we go. Five gone here in the second period. Ekans tying goal came early here in this period. White Cloud. Throw that one across for Wah. Back over to Graves. Here comes Tron, but that was stopped and snuffed out. By Ekin at center ice. He'll feed that one through. Back over to the left side. Good shot on. And a save will slow down. Something to keep in mind here for Switzerland that is massive. They really have had a back and forth so far. Their games have been very volatile. Look at their Norway matchups. 12 to 4 win for Suf in Norway. 9 to 2 win for Chuan and Switzerland. So the head-to-head. -head is really big and remember that play we mentioned with Suf a little bit earlier with the goals for maybe that makes a difference that story is kind of reaching ahead right now because they're so so close with one another if Norway wins both and Switzerland only ends up with one win they're tied at nine and it goes to that tiebreaker for potentially so that's something to keep an eye on that's what we talked about man it's as if we we wrote this out as a story with what transpires on the ice and when it matters it really does Nevertheless, though, 14.30 to go in the second period on the other side, the PlayStation side of things. Hoffy is on the board. It's 3-1 now for Antonio and Team Sweden. So we'll keep an eye on what's happening there as Hoffy's trying to do what he can, try to get his team into the playoff phase. But Antonio just scored again, so 4-1 there. And a goal here! Tron! 2-1! How about... Tron, it just feels like whenever Ekin is going to get that advantage, whenever he's going to turn that momentum in his favor, Tron finds a way to get that extra leg and get his lead back. We'll see if maybe Ekin can respond, but that's big because remember, it just takes a win for Switzerland to get in. Another attempt there to make that three to one good chance. Fell just short though, as that one bounced aside. Turning around with it. Here comes Tron again. Outstretched stick there. Good work by Ekin. Ekin playing defensively quite well right now. He just needs to get the offense going. Too much pressure by Tron. As we're closing out the second period right now. In this contest. Back around the net. Wrap around chance. And the goalie's there to make that save. Outlet pass to send it up for Ekin, but... That'll get stolen. They'll go for a change. Tron off the change. He's wrecked there coming into the zone, but gets around and scores. So the take a hit to make a play works. He does. And it's 3-1 Ekin now on the ropes. And don't ask Tron if he knew the situation because he has stepped up valiantly here for the Swiss side. He knew what he needed to do. These two guys don't know what's happening with each other's games, though. For all Tron knows, it's a must-win situation, which as of now, it is a must situation. Norway, if they win both games, they have nine points. Switzerland stuck at six. That would put Norway through. So as of now, with Antonio Manon winning over Ho Hoffi, this is a must-win game for Tron. He has to win. He's stepping up in that situation right now. Can he pull through, or will Ekin reverse what Antonio Manon did on the Swiss side or the Sweden side last time and come back from two down and get the momentum going? You want to control your destiny no matter what. You have to do so here. Norway up 5-0 in Sooth. Robin down 2-1 versus France's Razor. So a split series over there opens the door for a chance here for Switzerland. Time winding down, final 10 seconds. Banked off the penalty box boards. Shot through, saved, played out. And that's it for the second period. Let's switch over to the PlayStation side. Antonio and Hoffy, watching Hoffy going north on your screen in the dark reds. There's a shot and score! 
Antonio doing his part for Team Sweden to try to play spoiler for Switzerland, and it's five to one. We've had people of the moment. I mean, <laughs> every time we turn their attention to a matchup, whether it's Maverick, whether it's Antonio Manon, whether it's Tron, whether it's Lady Brunette, it hasn't mattered. Everyone, when we switch to their game, finds a way to score right when we get there, it feels like. And that's a massive one. Sweden in firm control of this game. And Hoffi, he has got a lot of work to do if he doesn't want all the pressure to be on Tron right now because he doesn't know the situation that he's winning. This is massive, massive, massive for this game to potentially turn around. We'll see how Hoffi responds. Has to be a sense of urgency for him. This has worked out great for the broadcasters, so I can't complain too much, Brandon. <laughs> oh, I'm not mad one bit. I'm loving every second of it. How can you not with action and implications like this? I want to thank our partner Skoda and Strauss for bringing this and making this available to us. Shot there off the side of the cage. And Hoffy's trying to get back in here. See what he can do. He's got the puck there. Two men met at the boards, both his team color. As we'll skate it back. Time winding down in the second period. Flipped out from the line change. Not everybody got off, though. That's picked up off of a weird bounce. He'll keep it in the offensive zone now. Trying to throw that one through, he'll pause and think better of it. Now left off in front, final 30 seconds. That should do it on this attack, and it will. Coming back out is Antonio, who's played a heck of a game so far. In the spotlight, that shot doesn't get off. Three, two, and one. So we'll switch back, as I almost took the broadcaster's curse there. We'll switch back to the Ekin and Tron matchup. This is something to watch for now. Two points here, or th sorry, three points here could make an entire difference, and it might. Tron extends the lead to three. Oh, boy. Things are getting interesting. Right now, if things stay the same, Swiss would have nine points. Norway, I'm not sure if the score of that has changed or not, but if they're both still winning in their matchups against France, both teams will be tied at nine points. It would go to that head-to-head -head differential that we talked about earlier. Brandon, it's a split series. Sooth is winning 6 nothing. Razor's winning for France 2-1. to 5-1 still in the Antonio matchup. Ekin down by three versus Tron. This is picking up a little bit here as the math is going to get interesting. So the action on the ice might not be the exciting point once everything winds down. It might be the math. Who would have thought in 2023 mathematics could be exciting, kids? Stay in school. As we move on, 8.33 to go here in the third period. Delayed penalty. One of our few penalties. Don't see a lot here in 1v1 hockey. 8.26 left. And that'll send them to the box. Yeah, the penalties have been a bit of a rarity, it feels like. But, you know, it's it's pretty interesting here right now because Ekin, he's a guy that when he gets momentum rolling, he can get things going. But it just kind of hurts when you have those penalties and you have a guy like Tron that's feeling himself the way he is, especially with what's on the line for him in his country right now. Hofi just scored his second goal at 6-2 now for Antonio. 13 to go here in the third period on that matchup. We'll go back to the, or sorry, 15 to go. We'll watch that one at the conclusion of this one. As another penalty, we jinxed ourselves. See, the broadcaster's curse did come back eventually. We turn the cameras on, we get goals. We say things about penalties, we get more of them. And speaking of goals, by the way, we got an update from the match between Razor and, and, and Robin Nielsen. Razor just scored for France, so it is a 3-1 lead in that game as of now. So Norway, their situation not looking as crystal clear as it might have been a few minutes ago. As this is Ekin moving into the offensive zone right now for his team in Sweden. Six minutes to go. Here in regulation, Ekin has not really gotten a lot going on the offensive end so far. It's been all Tron. It's a nice four check there. Calls a turn. Pass across. Can't get that to go in. It went all the way past the red line there for Ekin. Just the bounces and the play not going the way of Ekin. But nevertheless, his team, his spot secured. Not just in the playoffs, but as of now, secured as the one seed due to the work of Antonio Mann and his match against Hoffie. 
He's up seven to two now in that matchup, by the way, Brandon. Ten to go in the third, so that one's going to be concluding fortuitously for Sweden. Yeah. Not great for Switzerland when they need these points right now. We will keep an eye on that France matchup as well as that one's going to be pivotal, specifically the Robin and Razor contest. Yeah, and on my end, Nick, it looks like we just had another update in that game. Razor scores yet again. It's four to one in favor of the Frenchman and Norway. It looks like it's going to have to go down to that goals for differential unless Ekin somehow comes back. Not so fast, Norway <laughs> fans. Keep looking at your screen, my fellow friends. Could we see a comeback? Could we? Could we? We might. Ekin could come back and just spoiler all of this. I wouldn't put it past him. He's done it before. Oh boy, oh boy. Switzerland, are they in trouble? We're going to find out here. Two minutes Remember, to go. Remember, Switzerland came in on a three-point advantage in the group standings as well. That's important to keep in mind. Yeah, they were up four games played. They were up by three points. And there's Ekin! One goal down now. Shabat cuts into that two goal deficit. If you stood up, sit back down, my friend. <laughs> you don't want to miss this. Ekin with two straight in about 30 to 45 seconds. It's a one goal game between Ekin and Tron. The path to the playoffs could go through this matchup right here. Nick, I'm going to hand it off to you. One minute left down by one. Ekin back on with a stick. He's got it shot on through a couple of players. That'll trickle off to the right side on your screen. 45 to go now and a penalty coming up. A power play for Tron. And that might do it unless this turns into a power kill. Oh, that's a critical mistake for Ekin. You have all the momentum. Tron is on his heels. He gets a little too aggressive, and he slashed him right in the arm. No doubt about that penalty. Now Tron has the extra man to maybe put this with a what a save by Dreiger. Still in it. Four men that are going to press. Have to press Just here. Just offside. Oh, boy. As great of a player as Ekin is, he has made some very uncharacteristic mistakes here in this game. You might be right, but that's not luckily going to do them in. All of this just rests on what happens to their opponents. Tron right now looking to just hang on. 20 seconds to go. He's got some room. Breakaway chance. Forehand off the iron. He's got it behind the net now. 15. Winding down. Can he just keep it in the end? Wrap around one time. Chance flutters up. Scooped out. Ekin's got it. Five seconds. He'll take it himself through the blue line. Got room. Outside. Backhand save. And that's going to do it. Ekin falls four to three to Tron for Team Switzerland. They win and they at least pick up three points. They at least pick up three points, and now it all comes down to what happens in Norway. Razor up on Nilsson, six to one in the third period, a little over 30 seconds left in that matchup, which means that Switzerland has nine points. Norway only going to be able, if I'm correct, Nick, to pick up three. So that right there, Tron clinching this game, if I am correct, closes the door on Norway and will put Switzerland through to the core finals. We'll have to wait to see if that math all lies correctly, but from my calculations, Switzerland through into the quarterfinals with that win from Tron. Yeah, that would give Norway three more points to six. Switzerland gets three more points to nine. So no matter what happens there, it's six to one in the other matchup between Razor and Robin. So yeah, I think we can say it, Brandon. And that game just went final. Razor wins that game six to one over Robin Nilsson and Switzerland coming in with that three point advantage. Both teams evened out with three points. Nothing changes. Switzerland was at the two spot. They move on to the quarterfinal. That right there locked it in no matter what happens in any other result. So with the upset, the odds on favorite of our featured matchup, wow. Ekin losing four to three. Tron's work.
puts them into second place, and they punch their ticket into playoffs phase three. They will be back next week. And well-deserved for Switzerland. I mean, we kind of said it. They've done this all group stage long. They win one, they lose one, they win one, they lose one. And the work of Tron, as you mentioned, to be able to clutch up against Ekin, that surge that he had in that second period against a player in Ekin that is one of the top in the world, has won tournaments, has been a finalist in this tournament before, he comes out, plays as well as I think we have ever seen Tron play, at least in our personal experiences, and gets his team and his country through. Because if, remember, if they lose that game, it goes down to the head-to-head -head goal differential. And Switzerland and Norway, I'd have to do the math, 12 goals for Norway, 2, that's 14, 4 plus 9, that's 13. Switzerland would have been in by one goal. As if we so, said, the goals mattered. And remember the play from Souf there to where he held the last nine seconds. There's no guarantee he would have scored. There's no guarantee, but you never know. But none of that matters because Tron doing the work he did to get in. And credit to Norway, a really good battle. Souf beating Hoffi, or excuse me, Hoffi 12 to 4. Robin Nilsson stepping up against in the way he did. It was a really tough battle, but. How about Switzerland doing what they need to do? It wasn't easy at all, but they did what they needed to do, got the job done, and they're through to the quarterfinals. But wanted to give some credit to Norway because they really made it tough for Switzerland, who, by the way, made the playoffs last season into the quarterfinals. So not an easy bout at all. Almost got their job in, but nice job from trying to clutch it up and get his team through. Quick programming note here for our friends watching on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure... Tomorrow, if you want to see more of this amazing action, because it is amazing, uh, midway through the broadcast, we'll be on Facebook and Twitter. So you're going to want to find us right there at the bottom of my screen on IIHF Hockey on Twitch, IIHF on YouTube. Continue to watch right here. Come on over. Come on over to Twitch. Come on down to YouTube. You're going to want to be here because we got bangers of matches to start off tomorrow. Latvia versus Denmark, Denmark versus Finland. Italy versus Ukraine, our friends over there. Finland versus Italy. And then it gets into the featured matchup. Finland versus Latvia. The rematch. The one for the ages. Eki looks to set his sights on going dynasty level with his wins. Latvia looking to get back in and play upset. Anything can happen in the group stage. And then over in group B, we start off with Austria and the U.S. Canada versus Great Britain. Uh, Great Britain versus the U.S., Austria versus Hungary in our featured matchup midway through that broadcast, the U.S. versus Canada. None of these games are throwaways. Everybody has a shot to play spoiler, Cinderella story, upset or hero. It all comes down to the group stage tomorrow. Here, same time and place, 12 p.m. Eastern. Check your local times because I'm bad at doing time zone conversions, but you're not going to want to miss out on what takes place here. Make sure you're subscribed turn on your notifications, and be ready for some great hockey action. Brandon, any last words here before we take a look at the standings one last time to secure this? I mean, just to kind of build on the what you said, you talked about the U.S., you talked about Canada, you talked about Finland, but those aren't the only stories. You have Denmark, who's back after last year in a last-minute decision yeah. in that Germany game that we talked about earlier were bounced out of the playoffs. They come back with a chance to get themselves back in. You have Great Britain trying to get back in after they miss by six points with that Martindale and Brute Force duo that I know a lot of people are looking forward to. Hungary, who didn't get a single point last you're going to see the 77 goals trying to come back with a lot of those players returning to that team this year. Can they rectify things and get things going? Every team in this tournament has a story. Every team in this tournament has something to play for in every game, every play, every point, and every goal makes a difference and decides who moves on and who goes home. We saw that today, and we're not done. We're going to see it again tomorrow. I promise you, you are not going to want to miss it. Make sure Sure you tune in it is going to be worth it. we have some great storylines some great teams on deck and we saw that here today especially with what we saw in group c and group d there at the end just now as you see it on your screen officially sweden in switzerland in norway out and just like that day one 
of the group stage phase two has concluded. Like we said, tomorrow, you're going to want to join us back here. Here's your groups in group A, Finland, Latvia, Denmark, Italy, Ukraine, group B, U.S., Canada, Great Britain, Austria, and Hungary, a whirlwind of a time. You're not going to want to miss it. You're going to want to be right here at 12 Eastern for the pre-show, 11.45 a.m. Eastern. Be here. We'll be up and early, ready to get after it, ready to do this again to bring you another 40 matchups we have to deliver for you or some ungodly number like that, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I don't know. We have a lot. We have a lot, 40 some odd. I don't know. There's a lot of matchups to cover. You're not going to want to miss out. I know I'm not going to want to miss out. I'm even beyond contractually obligated to be here. I'm not going to want to miss out, Brandon. Why would I want to miss out? I mean, look at what we saw today. I mean, look at what we saw today. I mean, from the first group alone, that entire sequence, you have Czechia getting their way to the one spot and you have three, four teams battling for the last spot. One point separates them. It just so happens that Germany, who ends up getting that two spot, has to play the two teams under them. They take care of business, get it in, took overtime in one game. We almost saw some heroics there from Lady Brunette to push it. But, I mean, look at what we saw. And then Tron right there at the end to clutch it up. We saw absolutely amazing hockey, amazing circumstances, amazing storylines develop. And something, too, we also saw develop, too. Sweden, not necessarily as dominant there in that group stage as maybe some would have liked to have seen. I know that last year they were really great in the regular season and lost in that first quarterfinal. But, you know, Ekin is not going to be happy about dropping that game. Tron, a great player, a lot to play for. But Ekin, he's in the top class. He's the elite of the elite in terms of not just this country, not just in Europe, but in the world. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how Sweden looks next week because there were some points to where they looked a little bit shaky today as one of the favorites. It's going to be fun as we find out who they play in the quarterfinals after the Browns games. So that's going to do it for us. Same time, same place tomorrow. A little bit longer of a broadcast. That's okay. It's going to happen tomorrow. Not today. Today, that's it. Right now, we're done. I want to thank our sponsors. Skoda and Strauss for their amazing support to allow this to happen. The 2023 IIHF E-World Championship continues tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Do not miss out. Be right back here, Group A and B. But for now, we can say thank you and congratulations to Czechia, Germany, Sweden, and Switzerland for punching their ticket into the playoff stage. Things are going to get nitty and gritty, but not before we see some rivalries take place tomorrow. That's going to do it for us. On behalf of everybody backstage, working relentlessly and tirelessly to bring this to you, I'm Nick DeMeo. That's Brandon Bigsby, baby. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Be safe, be well, and we'll see you then. Thank you all for watching.